What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live broadcast of the Engadget Podcast. I'm Senior Editor Devendra Hardwar. Today, I'm joined with our uh, Deputy Managing Editor, Sherlyn Lowe. Hello, Sherlyn. Deputy Editor Howdy. Nathan Ingram. Hello, hello, Nate. Hello. Uh, ben Elman, our podcast producer. Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? Hello from space. <laughs> hello from space. I'm jealous. I could I gotta... go for being out there right now. <laughs> One of it, let's just it's all really get quiet. on this planet, everybody. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Let's see who who's in the chat because I have to load up the chat. We got Michael Coley, Buddy Three Hundred Five Love, Chi Ming Chong. We've got Raj Kumar. We've got Ben Elman, Who dat? Mohit Paveja. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that right was all the names Sherman. I saw. <laughs> Say that again. You were like right on that. Yeah, I got. I was just staring at it. Yeah, I mean, go. she's yeah. This guy that who who's talking about her is what Trillin's looking at here. <laughs> hey, we've got a lot of there... stuff. <laughs> Someone is right there. I know really exactly. Big, I know exactly what Trillin's looking for. Man. Didn't take long. Buddy three hundred five love is like. I heard you already have all of the Pixel products and are texting them. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. I mean, you know, we get stuff to test. That's how, that's how this rolls. We're going to be talking about Google I.O., folks. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, our <laughs> the very, very long Google mm. I.O. presentation, which uh, Nate and Sherlyn have been like living and breathing for the last couple of weeks, uh, yeah. just preparing for it and hearing about news for it. So we're going to talk about that. And also, Sherlyn, you took a field trip last uh, week, right? You took a field trip yes, to Microsoft uh... and checked out some hardware. So we're going to be talking just about the, new the adaptive stream. mouse. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, uh, the it, inclusive tech lab. Yeah, yeah, it's getting all blurred out. Yeah, your camera. You get a T-shirt. Blurring it. Ah. It's a. It's like a one of the Henley jersey shirt type things. I hate oh, sleeves. Cool. This is uncomfortable <laughs> for I, me. I, I, That's actually perfect sleeves. Pacific Northwear. Uh, Pacific yeah. Northwest. Yeah, actually though. Wear. Yeah. It's very P and W. That's cool. I always love visiting Microsoft's. Uh, they have some crazy cool buildings and a lot of cool labs. Oh there. man. So we're yeah, gonna be talking to all talk about, about that. It. Folks, uh, if you're joining us for the first time, we are going to be live recording the podcast, so we can't really chat with you all while we're doing that. We're going to take some breaks and do some Q&A in between, but uh, you know, you're going to hear how, how we make the audio podcast, basically. So get ready for that. Thank you all for joining us. It's always fun. Do you we mind if so I do another so round of yeah, shout outs? do it. Do it. <laughs> Ruin Dig said hello from space to you too, Ben. Old Man Puzzles Pops QZ and... Ayub Coach Bati and <laughs> Kylo Tech. It's a, uh, it's. So I apologize if I get any of your names wrong, but it's nice to see you all. Yeah, we we're seeing some people that we haven't seen in a little while, and I yeah. think they're all the Android heads. So oh, naturally, they're going to gonna be here talking this about. Week. Oh boy. Yeah, all, is, we've got all great. the Android heads in for Google I.O. So you should, I think be, we're... you should be happy, Android heads, because that's why we brought Nate on. Nate is the <laughs> ultimate like Google fan. Nate loves Chromebooks. So... I love Chromebooks. Chromebooks were only mentioned once yesterday, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even Google I don't doesn't even... love Chromebooks. So did we catch it that. yesterday? Yeah, did we? Yeah, I don't even remember. It was very much an aside. It was very much an aside. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. no all right, news let's whatsoever. save this for the show. We will talk okay, about okay. the fact that they didn't Yeah, Nate. Yeah, Nate. Okay. My I'm recording. Least favorite phrase of all time. Save it for the pod. <laughs> Save it uh, for the pod. But, but that means pre banter. We're 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 gonna wrap up. Everybody's recording good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me double check. I'm pretty sure. Yep, going good. What about do it for the gram? How do you feel about do it that for one? the gram? Do it for the gram. No longer relevant. Um, <laughs> the word podcast no longer relevant. But we'll get into that for uh, I mean like yeah. later in the show. Do it for your okay. brand, everybody. You, ooh, Do it for yeah, your brand. Actually, <laughs> okay, that's really so what it is. <clears throat> we're getting ready to get started, so let's sync. Uh, so uh, I'm going to count down from three. At the end of three, uh, everybody makes a sound. Um, Dev, Nathan, uh, Sherlyn, and me. Also, you can sync in the chat. Everybody can clap in the chat if you like. Then we're going to do like five seconds of silence. That helps me edit. And then we're going to get into the actual podcast. So. Three, two, one. All right, we're done. Let's get into the show. Get into the show. Okay, okay. Let me just load up some things. Uh, I have the show notes right here. All right. All right, let's get to go. Let's start in three, two, one. What's up, Internet, and welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm Senior Editor Devendra Hardwar. 
I am Deputy Editor Sherlyn Lowe. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. This week, it is all about Google I.O. 2022. Uh, Google had a very, very long presentation around all sorts of news, not just gadgets. Sherlyn is tired. Uh, We're also joined (laughs) with uh, Nathan Ingram from Engadget, uh, Deputy Editor, to chat about all this stuff. Hello, Nate. How are you doing? Hello, guys. How's everyone doing this fine, fine morning? I mean, you seem more chipper than all of us, so I hate you for it, Nate, (laughs) right now. I've got a lot of stuff off my plate, so I feel a little better today. You're good. You got a lot of stuff off your plate. You have a full night's uh, sleep. Yep. You know, like, you know, you're, you're just like carefree over here. Published five things yesterday. So, wow. <laughs> love it. Love it. And yeah, you were Nate also uh, talked with Sonos about a lot of their new stuff. So we're going to be diving into all that. As always, if you're enjoying the Gadget podcast, please be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. Leave us a review on iTunes. That's super helpful. We typically record live on Thursday mornings around 10 a.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. Join us there. Uh, It's a fun time. You get to hear some banter. You hear some behind-the-scenes stuff. And we do some Q&A, too. So if we happen to have devices on hand, you'll actually get to see them before our reviews goes up. So that's usually fun. Stay tuned for that. Okay. Google I.O. I feel like every year um, we dread the big events, right? The big events mean... A ton of news, it means we have to talk to these companies about a lot of things and just juggle so many things all at once, new devices to review and everything. Google I.O. 2022, what did it mean, Sherlyn and Nate? Like, what, what, what's your overall takeaway from this thing? I have had this question asked of me a lot in the last few hours <laughs> or in the hours after I.O. And it was very much like when I had time to sit down and think about it. I, I think b- barring the surprise which was the return of, you know, basically Google Glass, I was Mm -hmm. very underwhelmed. I mean, like, look, we knew we were going to see a lot of machine learning flexing. We knew we were going to see a lot of, like, search stuff and, like, probably some of the Pixel hardware, and we did get all of that. And I just wasn't blown away yet by anything. Mm -hmm. Um, One of our YouTube chat uh, viewers pointed out that, like, it seemed like it was mostly about translation, um, which is not a bad thing, but then like, is that it, you know? So anyway, Nate, what'd you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that like the amount of focus they put on hardware for a developer event was surprising to me. Um, I like how they're teasing hardware stuff like the Pixel 7 and the Pixel Watch ahead of time. Uh, It's interesting. They did this, I think, a little bit last year. They they did an early drop of the Pixel 6. Like they showed some renders and said- Yeah, they showed the Tensor first, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and I like that they're doing that because it kind of like gets ahead of the leakers a bit. Yep, Um, yep. So like, it seems like a smart strategy to me. Um, but yeah, from the software and like other side, the first 90 minutes of the presentation, it felt a little less impactful to the normal person than uh, yeah. some IOs are. Which is like, which is fine. This is yes, a developer it's okay. conference. Yeah. It's okay. Right. Yeah. This isn't it's meant okay. to necessarily sell yeah. a widget to you, right? <laughs> as far And as far as like big company developer events go, like I feel like Apple treats WWDC in a way that's both a consumer product event and also really shiny stuff for developers. Microsoft, I feel like, oh my god, don't you very much like... on the developer side? Like it's usually yeah. for the past couple of years, at least when we were going to build, it was Sherlyn and me yes. in Microsoft's yep. like keynote thing, watching them code on stage. Which, yeah, yeah. you know, more power I... to you guys, more power to you in learning how I to use the have... cloud works. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> I still have nightmares of like having to code vb.net when I was in my first programmer camp. It was yep. just gross. Yep. And I think that's what I was getting flashbacks of anytime mm-hmm. they code on Comp Sci 14 for me, I just, I wanted oh. to, that was the class that made me run away from key, computer science. So sorry, coders out Aww. there. I am, I'm weak. I cannot take it. Uh, but yeah, whereas Microsoft tends to get very technical, I feel like, yeah, Google is balancing both developer stuff like, hey, we have these new AI technologies. We're bringing new stuff to consumers, but they're also like, very very apple too right like mm-hmm, i'm getting mm-hmm. the apple sweepingness the the moving montages like what are what our technology means for people yeah. um they're kind of balancing it all um and there's some really cool stuff like what, what do we have for ai driven features right we have uh auto summaries for doc for google docs which is something yep. they talked about a couple months ago but yep using like imagine you have a 40 or 50 page document and you're like i don't I don't want to read that. I just, I want to just go into this meeting and not do any homework. Um, they can use uh, AI inferencing and uh, language recognition to uh, to kind of generate a readable summary of the entire document. Mm-hmm. We need to see this in action. Uh, there have been uh, there have been things Google's done like uh, that. Uh, 
is it like behavior the language the language tool that's in docsit mm -hmm. is trying to like police your language basically like the thing about helping you oh telling you to sound nicer or something to sound nicer Wait, and really? then like yeah that's that live now that's live now vice did a really good piece about like hey this is broken <laughs> like no yeah i'm just good. writing normal words and google's like no 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 don't be so mean uh somebody wrote motherboard which is the name of their tech site and google's like yeah. don't be so offensive don't call somebody a motherboard <laughs> okay <laughs> so that's I think why though i need some work yeah i think that leads in really nicely to what else google shared on stage right which is the new ai test kitchen app mm -hmm. um after in announcing their new like natural language model called Lambda 2, Sundar Pichai was like, we also have this app called AI Test Kitchen. It's meant for us to, or them, to um, test out its models and get feedback, right? Not only from like users, but also from what they were saying was like social scientists and some mm -hmm. of the like ethics experts on how to, so then they can help to program not only like ethical AI, but also probably bring in some of these like um issues that they were facing with some of their other uh models I probably don't, i don't know and also hearing the stories we are from like google's ai team and how like they have not been kind to people who bring yeah. up issues with AI, with google's ai models like i i don't know i don't know there's some I don't, they're bringing some of this stuff to assistant as well right the look and right. talk features which we talked a bit about like the technology yep. behind that a year or so yep. ago right Sherlyn? What, what Early, is earlier talk? this year yeah earlier this look year. and talk is a combination of of various like nonverbal cues for your nest smart displays to be able to know when you want to talk to it, instead of having to use like your voice to trigger uh -huh. it so like uh -huh. if it detects you're in the area and you're gazing at it using either its camera or solely the radar <laughs> sensor it'll be like what's up what's up and then like it'll look for you to be saying this something. Be really be sad more and annoying. They should put like a little puppy dog face on your like Google, you know, Nest Hub. Like talk, talk hey, to me. Hey, talk hey, to me. Treat? Yeah. You got a treat? You got a command for me? Um, <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh, they should build a robot dog. They, they. Anyway. I mean, you know, they're gonna do that. But imagine like every time you walk by a Google Assistant, it's just like a pair of eyes like following you. Like hey, <laughs> come on, give me, give me a little something. Uh, Any my eyes, perfect. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a fun feature. It's more like making Google Assistant like less of a less of like this like weird robot in the sky and making it, it seem more personalized to you, right? It's part of the part of the issue too is that like if you have multiple devices in your yeah. home, like I do, when you yeah. say the hot word, all of them the wrong one triggers. Yeah. I can be standing in my kitchen miles away, and the one in my living room will be like, "Sup?" I'm just like, "No, <laughs> no, 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 no." no. And, and then, you know, so I think this is part of the part of the way to address mm. that, maybe too. That's kind of cool. Your speakers like, really say "sup" to you that often. Sup. That would be cool. No, just in my head, and then That's I'll be like, real. "What up, B word?" <laughs> Boy, don't, don't swear word. at your technology. The robots yeah, yeah. are going to rise up, and they're going to remember you. Yeah. I'm very before. nice to them afterwards. I pet them a lot. There's some other things too, like uh, Google Maps is adding an immersive view of major cities, which basically looks like they took like the 3D street view stuff and like turned it into landscape. So there are like shots of London, which looks like, it looks like a photo from the sky, like overlooking all of London, except it's Google map data. Um, yeah. That's kind of cool. I think the cooler thing is like they should stuff inside restaurants, right? Like an immersive yep. view yeah. of a restaurant and it uses AI to stitch together photos. So you can basically go in and do like a 3D, uh, 3D, like, look around, see what yep. this place is like. I was going to say that the immersive view, Apple, believe it or not, has actually had that in their yes. Maps app for a couple of years now, essentially uh -huh. the same thing. And I was like, man, it's not often they've got, like, a view that, like, Google doesn't. So I'm not yeah. surprised to see this mm -hmm. here, but yeah, it's very cool. And of I course, see... they're like, we're doing it inside and Apple doesn't do that naturally. Doing it inside is kind of huge, especially right now. It's like, I want to, my, my daughter, Sophia, is very enamored with like, I want to go to a restaurant. I want to yeah. sit down. I want to watch people Aww. and eat. I was like, she's such a New Yorker. I mean, but, it sounds uh, great, ideally. But... I have to tell her the world's on fire and we cannot <laughs> safely go into restaurants because you're unvaccinated, kid. Uh, oh. But we can go to like outdoor spaces or like places that have like little patios. So I've been like, when we're looking at restaurants, I, I need to like, do you have an outdoor space? Can we be there safely? Is it not going to be too crowded? Um, maybe a view like this would be really nice to have because people don't yeah. always take photos of everything at a restaurant. So that's kind of cool. I did I... that. Mm -hmm. I feel like everything we've talked about so far, and I'm, I'm sure more to come, right? But everything that was kind of unveiled on the software side of IO for me, it's stuff that just builds upon what's already out there yeah, for them. Yeah. This immersive view thing builds on what they were already doing with indoor spaces and doing with their AR and AI views. And not 
not AI views, mm-hmm. AR and their live views. So I, I, that's why I think it felt overall underwhelming to me. Like everything was mm-hmm. just built upon something that was already announced earlier. Even look and talk, right? So Yeah. And also like some the of the same. features, go ahead. I was just saying, you could probably say the same about their Google wallet as a thing again, which like right. <laughs> it has been, but they're just like, we're going to like, rejigger this a little bit uh once again because we saw that apple is having such success maybe i don't know and speaking of google wallet too it's like there's a lot of things like hey you're just doing everything uh apple pay has now right like uh state ids and everything Mm -hmm. vax Mm -hmm. cards and like yeah so much of this event was uh them just basically doing features that apple has had for a while which is yeah. kind of uh, but, kind of a thing. The Pixel Buds getting a bunch of like oh AirPods esque uh, Find Me features and yeah. active noise canceling. Fast you know, switching. fast switching. Fast yeah. switching is like why you would buy seamless switching. Yeah. yeah, seamless switching is like why you buy AirPods if you have iOS devices because yeah. it's yeah. so much easier. So it's a lot of catch up for Google too. And you I, you did not like the the one more thing, right, Trillin or. I, I actually didn't mind the one more thing. I do feel like we're sort of wading into the hardware section. So I want to just point yeah, out really yeah, yeah. quick that speaking of Apple, they also didn't hesitate to throw in a shot to be like, yes, our whole show. They didn't even say this part. I'm saying it. Yes, our uh-huh. whole show is about copying Apple. But when it came to RCS, they were very much like, we think every phone maker. And yes, look, RCS. I don't, yeah. I, lo- I love Google. Mm-hmm. People at Google know I, I love Google. <laughs> Almost, but I mean, I yeah. I think it's funny. I just don't think that in a, a, a keynote where people are observing that much of your features are following in the footsteps of your biggest rival company, that you're also like taking this pot shot at them. It's kind of yeah, weird. Don't take pot shot. Well, I don't know. Uh, I would rather they lead with like good features. Like they were talking about RCS, right? Which is like the rich text messaging, like the iMessage like features for yeah. Android. And they're like, uh, it would be nice to have interoperability with every platform. That would be nice, but uh, yeah. oh, don't be so And also desperate. with end-to-end encryption on mm-hmm. RCS, they're yeah. they're allowing for that between platforms. I think that I, I agree it's important. <laughs> I'm just like, cool. That's cool. Be- well, before, before we do hardware, mm-hmm. I would say one other cool thing I, yeah. that they mentioned was uh, open sourcing all their skin tone research. Yes. Sure. I think that's super good. That's that was... after being the company whose AI model was like the example of bad AI <sighs> modeling for dark skin tone. So yeah. that's something, I guess. They've... They've been working on this uh, real tone project for a while mm-hmm. now, like at least for years that I know of. And open sourcing it, I think, helps. The fact that they worked with this Harvard re- researcher um, to come up with this scale that apparently is being very well received is good. And open sourcing that even better. So I hope. I, think, I mean, yeah. I hope it doesn't mean like they. Okay, it's open source now. We don't have to now do this done. work anymore. I don't. I don't want that. Yeah. That is- that has been yeah. a thing that a lot of companies have done. Like, hey guys, we open source this. It's a, it's up to you now to make this better. I'm like, no, this is you're your the one tech. with all the research or the uh, yeah resources. You need to, you need to keep right. working on this, and we will build on what you're working on. But you still got to do. I think it's work, a collaboration. So I yeah. hope so. I hope that hope is so the thing. Too. Before we get into all the like nitty gritty of the the real devices we're going to be getting, yeah. what's up with Google Glass? I feel like that came right at the end. I had to run out, so I didn't see that full part. <laughs> but, uh, it's back. It's back. Gosh, okay. That's that's going too far if you ask me. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's It's big. not. No. Yeah. Nate, you can go ahead and I I, I can talk about I whatever. Say, so like what they showed off was a pair of AR glasses mm-hmm. and it seemed to be like tailor-made specifically for translation, right? You yep. could yep. see, uh, you know, you would hear what someone is saying to you in a language and translate it mm-hmm. to the language you want and put it on the screen for you, um, which seems pretty cool if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. There's no camera on the device, as far as I can tell, which is I think was the probably the biggest hmm. pushback hmm. to Google Glass, right? Everyone's like, "Oh my mm-hmm. god, there's a camera on it that you can just like turn on at any time." It's a lot of that, yeah. So. I I so I see this as like I also missed part of it because I was like wrapping up a post or something, and I saw the translation happening on the screen. I saw that there was a person that was using sign language to communicate, who said that this was helpful for them. And I think my immediate question was that like this is really great for those use cases. As someone who like is a multilingual person, I can see it being helpful too. But I was worried that like it again leaves out a certain group of people. Like, what do we mm-hmm. what do we think about people who don't read, who 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 are illiterate in certain languages? Like, for mm-hmm. example, if someone is like speaks Mandarin but doesn't read Mandarin, mm-hmm. and then like when you're translating something, and I saw an example of someone like putting tr- 
Mandarin characters on the display. I was like, well, not everyone. <laughs> I know a lot of my friends speak it, but they don't read it. So that's not going to work. Is there an audio component that plays out back to them? That's kind of what I missed from the description of these glasses. Mm -hmm, Nate, mm -hmm. do you know there's a, like a speaker? I didn't see anything about audio, but they again, really just like super this, early, yeah. early yeah. days, right? So. Yeah. So I think Google's still working it out. I will say though that like given all the developments lately in like wearable, like uh, in the frames department, right? We've got Echo Frames, we got like Razer's glasses. Those are more like open ear speaker devices. Mm -hmm. I think Google looked at that and was like, you know what? We don't need the camera. Like a lot of, there's a lot of yep. ways to make this work. So I like that they removed the camera. I don't think we mm -hmm. really need it. It's uh so th to be clear, this is not Google Glass. This is like next yeah. generation AR glasses and that we're seeing this from a lot of companies, like you said, Trillin. So it, to me, it's just interesting to see like these look like normal glasses. Uh, they can give you some cool on-screen display info. The translation hook is a really interesting part, right? Like imagine if you could like take these things and travel the world and get decent translation for like just you, you go to a restaurant or something and simple commands, simple things like to help you navigate things. That's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope this all leads to something. I guess it's way what? too early to tell. Mm -hmm. I know. Speaking of early, too early to tell, like one of the things we would need to know too is how much they would cost. So yeah, yeah, and yeah. Anything... It's not clear mm -hmm. if this is going to be like a consumer focused thing. Yeah, I can see this being really useful for like people in certain industries or like in certain work situations, mm -hmm. right? But I don't know if this is the kind of thing they expect to get, you know, wide consumer adoption. And again, obviously, yeah. it's super early, so they probably don't even know. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's basically what Hololens has been doing for a while too. Is like purely like uh, enterprise work, business work it's barely a consumer product and Microsoft is just, just leading into the business side of things. I am waiting to see like who, who's going to make the good stuff, the good consumer stuff. Facebook mm -hmm. is just taking a real push. I have those sunglasses somewhere, the Ray-Ban sunglasses <laughs> and yeah, same. I have not put them on since I tested them because they're not <laughs> polarized. Don't oh, sell no. me Ray-Ban. Don't sell me good. Don't sell me sunglasses that aren't polarized guys. Sorry. I, I, I like the good stuff. Um, so I, all these companies are trying different things. It'll be interesting to see what Google does we'll here. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So in five years, you know, we will probably have effective AR glasses from like Apple and Google and everybody like, are you guys looking forward to this thing that's going to be coming or are you already dreading it? Cause we're, we're surrounded by notifications. I also kind of just want to turn off I instead still of like seeing more, you know, I still don't know quite what the like killer app use cases here. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what would make me compelled to like, actually go in on this yet mm -hmm. nobody's quite explained that i i see from this stream nate that you're a glasses wearer uh <laughs> one of our youtube uh audience members brian mm -hmm. uh, buddy 305 love said it is the the glasses would be cool if you already wear glasses or don't already wear glasses that's the thing right and it's like I don't currently wear glasses. So mm -hmm. when you talk about a compelling use case, it would be, need to be extra compelling for, sure. for me sure. mm -hmm. to put them on. Um, yeah, yeah. But you know what I say so to people who don't wear glasses? Uh, I, I don't care. I don't care. I've had to live with these things my entire life. So yeah, let's make them fun. You. Good for you. Good <laughs> eyes. What? I lasered the heck out of them. Come on. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> yeah. I might do that um, someday. But you're right. That, yeah. that is a good use case. I mean, uh, glasses have become kind of a fashion thing among, you yep. know, the hipster. The folks. blue light. Like, yeah. And the blue light stuff. But also, I know I know people with good eyes who just wear, like, frames to, like, give them a look. You know, like, I know. So people part of my should be punched in the face. <laughs> oh, now no. Now the glasses wearers are in charge. Now we oh, can no. bully yeah. you all. Yes, exactly. Can I, I unlaser my, my eyes? No. <laughs> Oh, well, no, you're them. faking it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to like some, some of the hard, like some of the news, the actual <sighs> stuff that is coming from Google this year. Android 13, real quick. It's, mm. it's more Android, I guess. Fam, yeah, we don't even, I don't think no. we heard anything new from Android 13 yesterday, right. honestly. Uh, wait, let me, let me give you the themes of Android 13. Okay. Enabling you to do more with your phone at the center, but also your phone not at the center. Also extending your phone beyond to watches, tablets, and more, but also, but also making all of your, all of your devices work better together, which t those points don't really complement each other. A, make better, make Android more good. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Do that. I I will. Like... Yeah, go. go ahead, Nate. Actually, uh, go ahead. I was gonna say it didn't seem like there's um, a super killer feature set that'll like differentiate 13 from 12, yep. and that mm -hmm. happens sometimes. And again, like it's a developer event. That's fine if they're gonna make things work faster, mm -hmm. smoother, etc. That's that's all good. 12 uh, was a big design jump too, right? Yes. So there's that. Yeah. Yep. So 
So from my understanding, I, I do think that there's more coming to Android 13 that we haven't seen. It might not be announced today. It might mm-hmm, be mm-hmm. like closer to the fall Pixel 7 launch event, which we heard about uh, yesterday. Um, I think that based on this preview of Android 13, nothing nothing seemed new <laughs> except for like maybe Google <laughs> Wallet or whatever. But then yeah. the, the thing you were talking about, that principle that they're working on, which like, oh, for your phone and then, oh, for all these other things and then, oh, for the entire world around you. This is something that, Google and so many other companies have been talking about for a long time, ambient computing and like mm-hmm. making everything work with each other. This is a world we're marching relentlessly toward. And mm-hmm. I I think Google talking about these things tells me that like Android might not be the OS like that powers all of these things, but it is an important component of it and might serve as like the headquarter, like brain space. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Th- like, does that make any sense? No, I hear you. I mean, they talked about, is it matter? You said no. IoT? I was like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, I, it does make sense because like they okay. talked about, is it matter? Is the IoT yep. yes. service yes. too? So that's kind of like being baked into it. And hey guys, like we we all want ambient computing. Like my favorite, uh, the smart home has really stunk for the past decade, right? And it's only getting better now when like I can walk into my house and like, hey, my my door camera, I could just pull it up easily. Um, I could pull up my home cameras on my TV because mm-hmm. they work with HomeKit, you know? So matter should make things more interoperable that'd be kind of nice um yeah i, I feel like I know. that's it are the tablet updates I know. part that's part of android 13 more tablet stuff and that's all neat yeah yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they talked about and this is something we've well going rewinding a little bit uh google in 2019 said they weren't going to make tablet hardware anymore after the <laughs> yep. chrome os pixel slate was a big bust uh which was a terrible idea what are you doing chrome os okay they're reversing course on that. They're going to make new tablet <laughs> hardware next year. Apparently, they're going to take a whole, you know, the better part of year to get it out there. Uh-huh. Uh, and there's nothing, no details on it, except that it's going to make a large, larger screen premium mm-hmm. sort of device, an iPad-ish mm-hmm. device. Did they give a name? Is it Pixel Slate Pixel, or Pixel, Pixel tablet? tablet? Pixel yeah. Tablet. Pixel Tablet. Which, it it just looks like the Nest screen. It just looks like yep. the home. They ripped it off. Yep. Yeah, they ripped it off. What, you need a year to prepare that, guys? I don't... I just, I have been really angry with the way Google has handled tablets because I was really into Android tablets when they first launched, you know, like they were cheap. Uh, they were, they were more accessible than the iPad early mm-hmm. on. And then Apple has just made the the iPad like cheaper and more capable. Right. And Google's like, I don't know about these tablets, you guys. Like, I don't know how to build, I don't know how to make software for tablets. I don't know how to, you know, produce them. And it, they really left up to Samsung and Amazon to like really take over the android tablet market and they've done a decent yeah. job of that i would say um those two but, companies but nobody yeah, else yeah nobody else um but they did talk about um from the software side of things well the knock mm-hmm. on android tablets has always been right that the software is not optimized it's just like big right. phone interface is blown up for a big screen looks like garbage yep uh google said that they're gonna make about 20 of their apps optimized for big screens so they're leading the way there which i think is smart and they yeah. also mm-hmm. mentioned huge partners like Facebook, TikTok, and Zoom, who are also mm-hmm. redesigning their apps to work on larger screens. So between Google and then those dev developers, yeah. go ahead, Sherlyn. Okay, go ahead, Jer. By Facebook, do you mean Instagram? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> no, they only sp- they specifically said Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Um, so You know what, guys? Uh, the iPad launched in 2010, and Apple just started showing you, a real you always focus do on this, Devendra. You- <laughs> it is now the year of our, you know, Lord 2022, <laughs> and Google's like, ha, huh, imagine that tablet apps. Let's do yeah. some tablet apps, everybody. But um, like, they used to have decent tablet apps. Like, they were one of a few developers that made things work yeah. better for larger screens. They just kind of uh, blew them up. Was it was anything ever really optimized for Android tablets? I feel like some of them were. I used I used it for a little bit just to like get a sense of what was going mm-hmm. on, and they like weren't like well. They yeah. used like there'd be like two column views. Yeah, three sure. Column views. Yeah. I used Android tablets for yep. years. I remember the Nexus Seven. I was really into that bad boy. Uh, Asus had some because uh, Asus made that one. So Asus had some like cool small tablets for a while. Uh, yeah, the the Galaxy Seven was tab- good because it was mm-hmm. small enough that it was okay that the apps were just blown up, right? Exactly. Like it was a slight, it was basically a bigger phone, but it was fine. It was perfectly fine and usable. Samsung's original Galaxy Tabs, uh, the Tab S, like once they started putting OLED into everything, it was like mm. those are beautiful looking screens. And then yeah, I feel like Google has let us all down. Hopefully, uh, I'm hoping, I'm going to be hopeful here that in they, 2023, 13 years 
after the iPad launched, uh, Google's going to be like, hey, tablet, tablets are a good idea. Let's make some more tablets. They they said that people want this, um, which I guess is... <laughs> no, that's... I think... Yeah. <laughs> people want thing it. Is, so what I'm are like, you doing? do they, though? Like, I, know, I wouldn't have expected. I'd be like, I didn't think anyone Dude. cared. There weren't Android tablets anymore, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Hey, more competition is better. So I wonder if mm -hmm. maybe they were looking over on the iPad side of things and they're like, oh, okay, those are selling a little bit. I don't know if they've been paying attention to the earnings or not because they're actually not like, uh -huh. they're kind of uh -huh. on and off. But yeah. um, it, it, to point out too, um, not to keep, bringing in our our youtube chat too much but there's two good comments on there one is that um buddy 305 love was like haha android l is about to show ipad os how it's done lol you very optimistic buddy okay and yeah, then ruin dig <laughs> was like um somebody uh said that the pixel tablet with the white bezel is out of date um yeah, I don't I don't really know what's what's going on with that design over there and with the mm -hmm. iPad already being bezel-less more or less. It's like Well, it depends. Like the like, the yeah. base iPad is not bezel-less. It has a big thing. If you go iPad right, Air, right, right. then you have like a nice really nice a premium one. iPad yeah. Pro that's more premium. It is just funny to me that Google's basically still trying to figure out like how do I how do I make a basic tablet, you guys? Like it's just yeah. them wandering around the street. Like guys, tablets, how do they <laughs> work? From a how do they work? From a hardware perspective, the Pixel Slate was actually really, really yes. nice. So like sure yes. they could just release I... that again and it'd be yeah, fine. If only updated. if only they didn't saddle it with garbage software. Dev, don't forget, like hardware site, like Google <laughs> did make the Pixel Slate those really expensive uh Pixel Slate, Pixel Chromebook, the Pixel original Pixel books. Like mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. they're good at making making really ridiculously expensive hardware with that really atrocious software yeah. sometimes, yes. Yeah, but yeah. I will say with them having slapped the Pixel branding on this tablet, I think that's what we're expecting, right? Like mm -hmm. a maybe not base level hardware, but as as the perfect so-called, like their, their way of putting it has been like their Pixel devices have been their canvas mm -hmm. for their their ideal expression, so-called, of Android, mm -hmm. aka Pixel UI. So I'm actually more interested in seeing what Pixel UI looks like on a tablet. For sure, um, for sure. Because be I love Pixel UI links, on phones. And I think there's been a lot of links between, like they yeah. talked a lot about all these devices working well together. So I'll be interested to see like how they make that happen. Mm -hmm. You know what? You know what? People people are really getting into tablets now. It's like I bought my mom and dad a base iPad, and now they take it everywhere. They use it all the time. Like they never actually use the gifts I get them, but that's one yeah. thing they're like, "Huh? Wow. Yes. Okay. Like I can yeah. FaceTime my grandchildren, and they look bigger, and it's easier <laughs> for me to read because I can, yeah. it's a big screen. So it turns out there are yeah. a lot of use cases for that. Um, the Pixel the Pixel tablet right now looks fine, but I would love to see like a smaller one, like a, like an eight or something. The minis, the yeah. Minis and like, yeah. no, let's go hard. Google's like, you know, we're doing a lot of great software for foldable phones you're not responsible for any of those foldable phones, right? You guys are lucky that Samsung is so desperate for attention <laughs> that they're using Android to build, wow. you know, foldable phones. But go, go, give us a straight up foldable tablet, Google. Like, go do something new. You just give reminded us me that I had a dream that I was saddled with a Samsung foldable phone last night. And uh -huh. Aw, Nate. So Aw. Aw. <laughs> this is what we dream about. It's very, oh, no. very sad. That's so it's like sad. in my head. Wait, okay. Uh -huh. uh, um, I don't. Do you mind if I move away from Pixel Go, tablet going, because there was going. so much weird Pixel? Okay, weird is the wrong word, but so much Pixel hardware announced, even though not all of them are coming um, that soon, right? I mean, for the Pixel 6a and the Pixel Buds Pro, those were the two actual devices that were launched yesterday um, with availability in July, so July 21st pre-order and July 28th actual availability, and then they also confirmed for us they were like. Hey, we know you're thinking about it already. Plus, also there's a shit ton of leaks. So here's the Pixel Watch and the Pixel Sevens. Like, have at it um, without actually giving us too much detail sure, um, sure. about those latter two. I, I mean, I just wanted to start with that caveat, right? And most sure, of these sure, things, sure. especially the Watch and the Sevens, are not coming yet. There, there's mm -hmm. more details to be had, but. I'm sure you have thoughts, Dev, on the Pixel 6a. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let's, let's start with the Pixel let's start 6a. With the stuff that we know is coming. Yes, we know exactly. It's coming. We have a price. Because my thing is, like, we know, we, you, we all know what an A series phone is, right? It is last year's hardware yeah. at a much cheaper price, and that is the Pixel 6a. It's a mid range phone. Uh, it's going to be selling for $449. Uh, but the most important thing is that it looks like the Pixel 6. They kind of kept that two-tone design. Yeah. And uh, it's going to the have the full Tensor chip. The full mm -hmm. Tensor chip. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not like it, right? slimming it down or anything. Like, 
that makes sense because they've been building it for a year so it's like just keep building it it's cheaper to make now you can put in a cheaper device uh this thing seems cool like mm -hmm. i think the pixel 5a kind of disappointed us because it was basically yeah. the pixel 4a 5g and it's all getting right. really confusing like it was basically that again um yep. whereas this is like hey new design uh give me a good chip uh has a smaller screen than the Pixel 5a does. Yeah, uh, so it's actually, inch, yeah. it's actually a little more compact and handheld, which I'm sure some yes. people would appreciate. They say Me. it's about the size of the Pixel 5, which is pretty yep. pretty well sized. Um, I, I feel like this is a good mid-range phone. I have nothing to complain about here. Like this is what Google should be focusing on is making accessible hardware with their new tech. Like this is something I don't think I Apple could do super easily, but what's up, Sherlyn? Oh, no, I was going to say, I have things to complain about. <laughs> go, go for it, go for it. Of course I, uh, I, I don't think they're using the same sensors on the camera as yes. they are on the Pixel 6. They're, that's mm -hmm. one thing. Cheaper and then they're sensors, also, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, cheaper sensors. So not sure, but, you know, Google's photography algorithms have been good, so maybe not mm -hmm. a big problem. But then the um, one thing is they don't have a headphone jack, so... That's sad, but they didn't have it on the 5A either. They just didn't bring it back. And then the uh, in-display fingerprint sensor, just in like... Okay. I, sure. I, I'm not sure if they've improved it. I know that on the Pixel 6 Pro, mm -hmm. it's gotten like, it's uh, it's polarizing. Some people actually find that it's okay and some people hate it. Like I was in an airplane for my trip to Microsoft next to a man who actually means the Pixel 6 Pro. I was like, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then he was like, yeah, I hate the fingerprints. I was like, yes, <laughs> someone else feels me on this. So yeah. Um, I mean, so that's my disappointment. The in -display every, every authentication solution is kind of bad right now right like face id yeah. bad with masks and you can't wear it with a mask right. and sunglasses exactly. like face id bad well, fingerprint sensors on the back kind of bad because it messes up the back design of a phone i don't know sure yeah it's the, the front the in screen this fingerprint sensors mm -hmm. are fine on samsung and oneplus phones right right they're so meh. What's so uh, I, there's a way to do it fine what's up yeah. there google but yeah. i mean overall 449 for a phone with yep. this power like Goodbye, and you're gonna get five years of software updates. So, hey, Pixel 6a, good. This I also is, like from a design. Phone, good. I like from a design perspective that, like, somebody on Twitter, I think it was Renee Ritchie, mentioned that like every Pixel phone has had a different design for the last like four years. Like they completely mm -hmm. throw out what they did the previous year and make a new phone. And this year, the Pixel 6a and the 7 both are reminiscent of the 6. So like they're sure. picking their design sure. language. The 7 has like metal it, they're accents. On it. Yeah, yeah, but it like well, looks very much like a. Mm -hmm. Like phones from the same family, whereas like well, but the mm -hmm. four to the five wasn't that big a leap though, right? Yeah, the Pixel Four was, was, just more the, was one of the most boring phones you've ever yeah. seen. Exactly, uh, the five was just incredibly. I maybe just blanked on the five, right? Because it looks so boring, but yeah. it, it was very similar to the four and in, in the in shape, I guess. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. Anyway, but no, the seven does look very similar. Yes, yeah. it does. I mean, they're going for a thing. Like, I think the thing is, like, you see somebody like on the subway or walking down the street holding up a phone pixel phone you can tell from like 20 20 feet away you know yep. they were using a pixel phone so i think that's sort of iconic thing google's going yeah. for i also know a lot of people don't like this two-tone thing so you oh. know you know yes i like yeah. it I, there's no accounting for taste mm -hmm. damn that's that's strong words this morning nate but i will say like <laughs> yes uh easy to recognize pixel phones until people put them in a case because i was like on mm -hmm. again on this one airplane trip <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, there's a Pixel Six next to me. Cool. I thought I was like, is that a Samsung? But then no, he was like, yeah. he, he actually had to correct me. He was like, uh, no, it's a Pixel Six Pro. And then he showed me the camera bar. I was like, God, I'm so yeah. bad at my job. Then, then you get to be um, like, eh, I know, I review them for a living. Okay. Oh no. Then I was like, oh, look at mine. And it was just <laughs> no uh, you, for the rec yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Pixel name? Six Pro and an iPhone just for work. <laughs> There just you go. for work. Sad, sad. We've hey. got some other devices to talk about. Yes. Real yep. quick, real quick. Um, you mentioned the Pixel Watch. Uh, it, it, yeah. <laughs> when did the Apple Watch launch, guys? It was that was like first released in the spring of 2015. Okay. Dev, so, Dev, yeah. I would like to bring you back to the year 2014 or 15. Okay. Uh -huh. I remember when I was Wear there. OS, Wear OS debuted. Okay, <laughs> and Google was like. Look at this thing. And Moto was there and was like, on a round face. And I was People like, were captivated by it. Uh, we were mesmerized. Yeah. It was lovely. It was really cool. So, it's all been Wear OS, since then. what is it like eight, five, seven years down the road now? They're like, hey, Wear OS, <laughs> we are still the same. And I am no longer mesmerized. 
Yeah. Um, there, which there is, is very sad. This thing can, like, looks kind of blocky, almost like a like scuba diving watch or something. Like it's big and hefty. I don't hate the design. It's just like, guys, what have you been doing for so long? For so long. I hope, uh, I hope the software is better. I hope they can like get the third party apps going. Something like, what do you guys want I... out of Pixel Watch? Because you're Google users mainly, right? I've been I mean, asked this before. Mm -hmm. I would like to see what this deeper Fitbit integration means. I realized right, right, that right. during our briefing, I realized what um, the difficulty in fully integrating Fitbit software into Wear OS, I realized what that was. It is that a while ago, I think when, when Google announced the Fitbit acquisition, it committed to not storing Fitbit data mm -hmm. on its own like servers like it's going to keep that separation so fitbit like your biometric data stored with your fitbit tracking apps um and tracking devices won't be um combined with google what google knows and so if they wanted to do a deeper system-wide integration of that stuff with like fitbit's help and, and algorithms and stuff like that that might be why it's mm -hmm. so tricky because the way they're introducing it into wear os now with their fitbit acquisition fully completed is to be like here's a fitbit app and I was like, I don't want, and I want like background running yeah. of like yeah. these activity tracking things, like constant heart monitoring. Did they buy Fitbit? How many years? Well, it took a yeah. long time for yeah. the merger to complete. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still been it's, it's been, been a little bit a while. Ago. It's been a while. Uh, I wish this was like the perfect Android watch. You know, like the perfect one if you want both health tracking and good notifications and everything. Um, it just I, seems so, I, it's taken so long to get us a basic I, watch. Yeah. I know. I'm sad. I don't know. Look, look, we haven't seen this in the real world ourselves. We saw it on Rick Osterloh's wrist. We saw it on stage. Um, and we know the general shape. I, I do think it's cool that like Google is coming ahead of the leaks and being like, Hey, we, we're not ready to fully announce it, but we're going to confirm it. So y'all can chill. I don't, but like, so here's my conspiracy <laughs> theory guys. Cause I'm sure okay. you talked about the, the watch that was left at a bar. Yep. Yes, I'm sure did. some sad Google engineer was like, you know, guys, <laughs> you, know, you know, what's even better than announcing a product uh, for <laughs> getting it at the bar, leaving it at a bar. And somebody, <gasps> didn't they have it for like weeks? And Four people weeks, were like, what, yeah. what the hell is this? Like, there was no <gasps> excitement. The person who took it, no <gasps> excitement, no recognition for like, hey, this is a next generation Pixel Watch, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> it sat in the drawer I... for a couple months. And they're like, <laughs> not a couple months. <laughs> they, a couple they... weeks. Yeah. The story is I read the Reddit AMA for with the person who actually found the mm -hmm. the watch and said that they handed it off to a bartender and then the bartender was the one who decided to call it into like whichever Android blog it was. Uh -huh. And um I think maybe like someone had to tell them that this was worth some interest to and I was just like God, if this was an iPhone y'all would be I bet, I bet this is a play like uh, it, uh, some engineers like hey, guys uh, let's let's get people buzzing about the Pixel watch you know leave it yeah. at a bar everyone's going to be speculating is it real or is it not and uh, it is funny to me how there's this like collective meh around both receiving the the leak device and uh, <laughs> getting it out there were people even excited like once the leaks uh started being written about like uh, i don't know there was a little, i mean because it's been rumored for so long that there was yeah, a little right. bit of buzz about yeah. it like actually being confirmed but yeah it's been a pixel watch has been like a thing for like two years that we've been talking about uh, longer mm -hmm. than that yeah. almost uh, i feel like since longer. before at my before i joined in gadget they were talking no. about a rumored pixel watch no no i feel like cray -cray. <laughs> i maybe since where OS was announced, that was my old job. And then yeah, yeah. <laughs> afterwards, kind of yeah. All right. So finally, finally, Pixel Buds Pro. Uh, mm -hmm. Apple basically made the AirPods Pro, or Google basically made the AirPods <laughs> Pro, right? Uh, I yes. have more hope. Well, okay. Sure, Nate. I, it's not I a bad don't... thing. Make, it, make a, a table of AirPods but... Pro features and Pixel Buds Pro features. And it's more, I think, the it's Air... one to one. Uh, yeah. The, the design is kind of different from at least my yes. understanding, yes. right? Yeah. So yeah, that's what I like about the Buds Pro is the design mm -hmm. looks mm -hmm. better to me. Also really good battery life, supposedly. Sure. We'll see how that, 11, how that, yeah. that uh, plays out. But um, AirPods Pro are, God, two and a half years old now, I think. So yeah. you got to figure mm -hmm. they've got a new one in the pipeline. Uh, Probably. This summer or fall. So. I mean, so, and secretly the Beats Fit Pro are the Apple ones you should be getting, everybody, because right. mm -hmm. those rule and they, yeah, yeah. They work, they work a little better, even though they have a worse case. But yeah, uh, Pixel, Big Buds up. Pro, uh, what do they got? Active noise, ANC. cancellation, yeah. uh, find, find me. It can, it can make noises mm -hmm. when you, when mm -hmm. you lose them. 
um, fast syncing, basically the entire table of AirPods Pro features, right? Kind of there, except more, except more things. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah. Is it like touch controls too, right? Like, because if mm. I'm not wrong, the AirPods Pro are like you squeeze the thing. That's or correct, that's yes. the AirPods, right? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So like, so I, I prefer the touch surface interaction for the buds, mm -hmm. um, but. I, I wonder that. how that uh -huh. works with yeah exactly like wind anytime wind touches any of my like earbuds they're they're dead that's it so that's we'll it, see that's it I like the the squeezing because it does kind of avoid the you can't control exactly. you can't go back and forward well you could go forward with AirPods but you can't like right. control volume and stuff so it's like exactly that's what Siri's for yo yeah that's what Siri's oh, for all right. Google Assistant's for <laughs> but like anytime you start doing touch and it's not like an actual exactly. like big thing I feel like it's messy uh, Sony does a lot of touch. Uh, controls on their stuff yeah. and i love sony but those things don't work as well so anyway are you guys excited for the pixel you. buds pro i think it's a good i think it's a good product for them to have because they had like the pixel buds second generation which like were a little fancier than the pixel buds yeah. a series yeah. but those didn't last very long so they've only had like a budget relatively speaking budget option so i'll be curious to see if they can do something good with um you know at this price point for sure yeah, I'm just excited to, for just like new buds because the Pixel Buds A series that I have are buds. just doing the awful thing where they either just won't charge in the case or they're just mm -hmm. not syncing or they're not staying connected. It's just a crapshoot. So I, I want to see how these do. Hopeful, hopefully Air they're better. I ran my AirPods Pro through the laundry a few weeks ago. <laughs> Still good, uh, right? No. No? Ah. no. I did it a couple of times and they were I've, fine. I've yeah. done it with, um, I did it a couple of years ago with an old pair of AirPods or AirPods mm -hmm. and they still worked. But one of them, the audio quality is severely compromised. So I think I they have really done. finicky microphones. So I got AirPods Pro a couple of years ago and I think they got wet at some point and now it's like a little bit of crackling if you turn on noise canceling, like some stuff. So, yeah. Hey guys, the, these things are not foolproof. Uh, they are tiny, tiny little computers in oh, your ears. Yes. So it's a miracle they kind of work at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing these things. Anything else you guys want to mention from Google I.O.? It, uh, like broader takeaways, like now that we have everything. Still kind of boring, kind of what you expected. Is it like a big step forward for Google in any way? It felt very I... iterative to me, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Again, which is fine. As we said, these aren't things meant to be like, oh my God, we just reinvented the, you know, the wheel here. Uh, it's just, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was a good event. It was long, a too long. longer than mm -hmm. I'd like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> iterative but, is a good word. I, I agree with that. Like, I think underwhelming was my first word for it, but I think iterative is actually a better description um, because the things that we actually might be more curious about just aren't things that they were actually launching at the show. Mm -hmm. Things like the Pixel Watch or even the Google, not AR glass, but like glasses type of thing. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Everything else is just like, yeah, great. We're, we're still in the middle of the pandemic too. So it's like, it's hard to yeah. do anything right now, yeah. especially for a company like this that may have relied on people being together and, you know, working on products. Well, there were yeah, people it was, at it was Shoreline. Really, um, yeah. yeah. Seeing yeah. the audience there was like a kind of shocking moment to me, to be honest. A lot big I've audience. So to, uh, I've been so mostly... used to like just seeing mm -hmm. the blank empty stage that I was yeah. like, oh damn. Dude. At least it's an outdoor auditorium, right? Yeah. So it's like, they, yeah. they can get away with a lot yeah. of that, but I was still like, icked out watching a lot of people in masks there i'm just more talking about like making these things you know it's like yeah uh it is easier to make a device when you can get in a room with people and design together and build yeah. prototypes and whatnot so i, I i'm not going to be too harsh on any company at this point because it's it's amazing like we we can keep going as a society and i hopefully hopefully we can just keep going folks yeah um stay tuned for our reviews of this google stuff coming soon i assume pixel not so soon a. i don't think pixel I don't 6a know. would be soon when is that i mean july? it's more than two, july more than two july. months away so God. yeah not hey soon. Well, start reviewing tuned. trillin start reviewing <laughs> trillin please yes yes please, please. <laughs> Okay, we could pause there. You guys want to yep. do a Q&A? Yeah, that, the was a, that was a good place Yeah, I think stop. so. All right, I'm going to grab water. Be right back. Go. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, we have so many questions on there. Um, people asking about offline events. I can poop twice a day, yay, who I don't know if we've already said hi to, but hi, we love your name. Uh, offline events and an offline Z Fold 4 event. I think Samsung will have an in-person event. I don't know that they'll, I don't know that it's wise to attend yet because they've in the past been held in like yeah. very tight spots, like small cramped areas. And I, I, there's just variants still that are still coming up. So we'll see. Um, 
Yeah. Thank yeah. You Lee Woods had a good comment about how Health Connect will allow users to choose to share their data between Google Health and Fitbit. Yes. And then that's actually how Google Health has been operating for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, it's more like the concern when Google bought Fitbit was that they're just absorbing all of Fitbit's data into their big giant databases of all our data already. And mm -hmm. I think people just didn't want that to happen. Yeah, they've been pretty clear about not doing that. Um, yeah. But I think it's good for them to keep on saying it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I had some banked question or questions and comments. Uh, Daniel Diaz said very early in the segment uh, that IO was the promise that Google follower to Google followers that we're still in the game of going after Apple. I mean, sure. the tablet and watch are not remarkable, but at least the promise can be. <laughs> that's, yeah, sure. sad, but you know, that's Pixel Watch is Apple Watch and Pixel Tablet is iPad. Yeah. It's SMH. <laughs> Uh, QG I like, says, oh, feel so go, defeated. Ahead. go ahead. No, yeah. I was just saying, I like, I feel so defeated being a Google fan and having to admit this. <laughs> so QZ said, can't wait for the Pixel 7 Pro camera results. Hopefully they improved the video. For me, iPhone has the best video quality of all the smartphones. Mm -hmm. So we'll see mm -hmm. if they can compete there. Rune Dig said, um, at least Sundar didn't call the Google, uh, the glasses Google Glass. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely never going to happen. Generation <laughs> no, AR they're never glasses. going to. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is I, actually. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. I think it's because they were so roundly mocked the first time. Like you don't want to hitch your wagon to a name that is already like soiled. Well, they're also while... not going to call it frames. I don't think because that's mm -hmm. like the echo frame. So I wonder what they're going to call it. spectacles. But that's Snapchat. That's what? Snap. Yeah. Yep. So you're so you're so late. Uh, all the yeah. names are taken. I don't know. They're going to call it Google Eye or iGoogle. Mm. Oh, 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 is that a collaborate now? You know, the Apple one's just going to be called iGlass. Like, that would yep. be No, they, haven't, they don't do Eye anymore. I, they, they don't do Eye anymore. anymore. Yeah. Those but it could call it EYE Glass. <gasps> mm. Anyways. Promotion Vision. Mm hmm. Uh, Bryant Mitchell said, I'd pay $150 for those glasses if you if you need your phone to use them. And then um, I very gently mocked Bryant Mitchell for thinking that those Do you glasses know how much would actual ever glasses be cost? $150. Like, <laughs> actual glasses at retail cost like $200 to $300. Well, okay, but you know, you, so, are, you, yeah. are you talking about the Luxottica kind? Or you no, any, any goddamn glasses. Because with the, prescription uh, lenses? With prescription lenses. Yeah. Like, glasses cost a lot of money. It's not even the lenses. It's, re it's not the lenses that add to the cost. It's the frames. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't know that. So there's Oh, I forgot. There's one thing I wanted to point out, and I forgot to mention during the podcast, is um, I saw some criticism after the keynote that actually some of the languages presented on screen behind Sundar during the show were mm -hmm. actually inaccurately depicted. Yes. I think, um, right? Nate, can you yeah, fill in I the details here? I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, I, will, I will get it wrong because I don't know these languages well, but there are languages that don't use traditional, or yep. sorry, Script. they don't use normal, wow. <laughs> Look don't be normal. problematic. Romanized script. Romanized script. Look how, script. No, <laughs> Roman saying, look script. how yes, yeah. thank you. I was trying to find the word. Look how <laughs> look how nor, look how American I am. It's mm, terrible. Um, anyway, they weren't using an English alphabet. They were using mm -hmm. characters that I cannot pronounce. So thus, I would see it and not notice anything wrong with it. But people right. who speak those languages were like, "Hey, that's not or actually a them. word." Or I think it was maybe backwards. Some of them were like flipped backwards. Yes. So yes, uh, yeah, that's. That's a big miss, but if you have a jerk like me, uh, you know, <laughs> setting that up, then I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, it looks fine. The glasses should also tell you every time you're being problematic, you know, like, <laughs> like just <laughs> apologize, apologize now. I just had a well, red, how is that my different from just the... turned red. Yeah. How and is that different that... from Amazon's tone thing that you give them so much? I mean, for? that's more yeah. useful. It's more useful was, because like it was Google. Google's the tone. That was no, the, no, no, no. Amazon yeah, did a Amazon tone has... thing on the band, mm -hmm. and then Google also did a tone thing on the yeah. I actually can't imagine, like, looking at all of Google's langu language stuff, where at the end of the day, you get a rundown of just everything you said wrong. <laughs> Every faux pas you've made. Uh, that's going to happen. Somebody's going to do that. Just watch. Um, yeah, so you were I saying think. that the, the characters were flipped around? Like, the characters no, like, if it was a, were if backwards? It was, if there was a phrase in, in this language, mm -hmm. it was reversed. Mm -hmm. Like, you're looking at it through a mirror. It was written backwards. Like, some okay. script is written left to right. Some script was written yeah. right to left. And there's also some little um, uh, differences. Like, I think uh, the words that could have been used could have been, like, something like, 
I'm getting the actual name of the language wrong, Sudanese dialect or mm -hmm. like, you know, that sort of thing. Instead of saying that, I think Google used something more like generic or just completely wrong. Um, and I'm still trying to pull up the like actual details here. So, yeah. Uh, that must have been, you know, that there is someone watching Google I.O. who uh, understood that script and also was dyslexic and mm -hmm. just oh, I got very it right. confused Sorry. by that. Nice. Yeah. So it turns out I got it right. It was Sudanese dialect was the the one that was a glaring mistake. Um, during instead of um, it said Sudanese language, but it mm -hmm. should have said Sudanese dialect or Sudanese slang. Mm -hmm. um, and it was uh, tweeted out by someone that it, uh, uh, called Sam Edinger, I think. And just it was that wasn't the only mistake. I think it was like like Nate pointed out some of mm -hmm. the it should have been written left to right or oh, right to left. Oh. All right, we should probably move on. Do we have yeah, any other questions? We, yeah, we have so much. Else we got stuff. To do. We, we got, got stuff to Microsoft do. Strap in, folks. To talk about. Yeah, Ooh. it's gonna be all Sherlin all the time. So I hope you're all ready. Way for I like it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Just prepare yourselves, chat room. I'm just warning you in advance. Okay. <laughs> If I'm gonna throw it to point, you. Someone point out that you're wearing the Mr. Mr. Sparkle shirt. No, is that I am accurate? Wearing the nice. Sparkle shirt. Yeah. I, I thought so, but I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't positive. It's a good shirt. It's a good it shirt. Good. good episode. Yep. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna throw it to you, Sherlyn. First with the the hands on, and then you could talk about the lab because I feel like that's yeah. the best way to pitch it. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> Let's move on to some other news and some big news. Sherlyn, you had an exclusive this week about Microsoft's adaptive mouse. Um, you actually traveled to Microsoft's yeah. uh, you know, corporate office uh, last week. Yeah. I like this. It was a big secret thing, too, because like I, I was like, Sherlyn, <laughs> what, what are you doing? Where are you going? She's like, don't, don't talk about it. Is it shh, 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 hush, shh. hush. Everyone's, everyone's <laughs> going to tell. What, what did you see and what is the adaptive mouse? I last week flew to Redmond uh, in Washington state and yeah, definitely like that's why last week you didn't hear from me in part. <laughs> uh, and I warned Devendra and Ben, I was like, if y'all mentioned I'm traveling whatsoever, I will have your heads. I went You're to such see a Microsoft. paranoid freak sometimes. Yeah, you went really hard. I'm like, I don't sometimes. think anybody really cares. Like no one's going to scoop you on this I was so scared. No I one's going to scoop you. I was so scared Birch would be like, why is she flying? Let's stalk her. Like, I just don't know why. Um, but I I want to, like, I went to the campus in uh, Redmond, Washington, and checked out the new adaptive mouse kit, actually. So if you recall, Microsoft in about 2017 launched the Xbox adaptive gaming controller, um, and that was designed to just help people with different, like, disabilities, be able to game at like at, with a with a, with a tool that mm -hmm. meets their needs, right? So with a mouse, I, an Xbox controller isn't something that non gamers really pay attention mm -hmm. to. But we, with a mouse, I feel like everyone that interacts with a laptop, a PC, would use a mouse. And I feel like or some sort of me, like input interface like that, like exactly, mouse yeah, exactly, like it, it, sort of a cursor. Like you know, you have an mm -hmm. idea what a cursor on a mm -hmm. desktop looks like, right? So the the adaptive mouse at its core is this. Um, like 20 uh, sorry two inch square sized uh device with your typical like left and right mouse click your scroll wheel in the middle but it's like a two inch square it's very low profile it's mm -hmm. not super thick and on its own already it's like it's for me the ergonomic benefit of this is that like you won't have to like use your entire palm to move sure. it around you can actually push it around with just your fingertips if you want it's a little like the old mac hockey puck mouse almost like yeah a, yeah two, smaller two yeah Except not yeah awful, hopefully yeah. Hopefully not awful. Um, I, I mean, like, like you said, right. I had the hands on for this and I was able to like use it. I used very little energy, a little, mm -hmm. very little like muscle strength to move it. And it's good for me because like, I have like borderline repetitive stress injury from having like my arm kind of hitched up a little bit from yeah, using yeah. my mouse already. Um, so there's other things like elbow angle and table height to, to, you know, fix my issue here. But I, I, I personally was already very interested then mm -hmm. This mouse thing, the square, is actually like a core that you can slot into other attachments. And Microsoft also launched one called the tail. This tail is it's uh, when you slot the mouse core in, it would turn it into more of a traditional looking like mm -hmm. mouse with a dome with a like a palm rest curvature thing and it's got like a thumb support on the bottom this thumb support is not only removable you can it's also reversible you can flip it to support mm -hmm. either your right thumb or your left thumb so like right-handed or left-handed use and i think that that like the fact that this is just 
one device that depending on your use, you just like switch it up, how to use it. Like that's really cool. The, yeah. It is smart and it's not othering. And that's a big part of accessibility and assistive tech. It's that oftentimes assistive tech that is available is either prohibitively priced <laughs> or it requires a whole different process to go mm -hmm. get it. And this doesn't, this is like left hand or right hand and it's not yeah. being a disability, but it, the fact that they're not othering the minority mm -hmm. group here, I think is like important. I like the, um, uh, the this uh, case, by the way, like which puts the bottom on the mouse. Um, yeah. It looks like the old Surface Arc or the Microsoft Arc mouse, mm. which could fold mm -hmm. flat. And I still have one of those. I travel with those because it's a great, perfect mouse to like move around with. So I like to see at Microsoft like building on the yeah. ergonomics they've already like done over the years. So yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. This one doesn't fold in um, mm -hmm. that I know of. So, so there's that. But then moving on, the rest of the kit, right? It includes the adaptive hub, which is basically a dongle um, <laughs> with like support for 3.5 millimeter switch input devices or USB C. There's three ports on the front there. Then you can actually connect um, the new adaptive button that. Mm -hmm. Microsoft also launched this week uh, via Bluetooth or via USB-C. And then you can program them to perform macros. And for just the like more mainstream population here uh, or people who are able-bodied, just having a device to perform macros already feels sure. like smart, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you think about people with different um, needs to like, if you want to, uh, for people who don't have the dexterity or have mm -hmm. different like limb situations, you might not be able to press a button. Um, you can also pop off the cap on, on, or pop off the top of the button, which in its, uh, com like its default setup is just like an eight directional D-pad. Um, you can pop it off and switch it in for like a, what Microsoft offers are a dual button. So it's two semicircles mm -hmm. or there's a joystick. So again, these are more like user-friendly, but for a larger population mm -hmm. kind of approach. Um, the, the extra component here that would make it more um, inclusive or assistive for people with different needs is that they've also partnered with Shapeways to allow people to 3D print any variety of like other attachments here to mm -hmm. turn this button into something that suits your needs the most, right? So cool. like cool, cool, cool. one of the toppers I saw was like a Dyson fan shaped joysticky thing, <laughs> which I know you can't really think about how to use it right now, but imagine if you don't like that hole that you can slot your limb through mm -hmm. and just push in different directions, or you can use that, that, that like hole in the middle, hang it on something and maybe mm -hmm. use like a different part of your body to push it around. Um, there's just different ways for you to interact with the button. And I think that that's smart. Now, something that a few people have pointed out either to me or in the video is that the, the base of the the button doesn't seem like it is sturdy enough to not move when people are pushing it, right? right? Like right, if you're right. pushing a joystick that that's very big, you don't want the button to move along with it. I think that's a very good point. I think you'd have to at least weigh down the button or mm -hmm. or like, like put a, a base Velcro or something. thing. Yeah, exactly. Something. Sherlyn, so that's question. something. Mm -hmm. Yes, go on. Is this um, like a final product, or are we still looking at prototypes here? Oh, so a combination of things. The mouse, mm -hmm. the tail, the hub, and the button are final. Mm -hmm. um, and by final, I mean like the hardware, I think is more or less good to go. I think they're yep. still finalizing some software side of things. Um, but the colorful parts that if you look at our uh, article or video, um, you'll see those colorful parts are the 3D printed parts mm -hmm. that aren't right. actually going to be available unless you go to the Shapeways and order them yourselves, or you can come up with your own design and and make them. Yeah. So it's nobody like has a 3D combination. printers though, so hopefully they are they're yeah. gonna make it that more accessible too. Talk about accessibility. Yeah. Shapeways yeah. is a whole thing where like yeah, I think you yeah. basically if you can design it, you can send it to Shapeways. They'll print mm -hmm. it and send hmm. it to you. That sort of interesting. Thing. Yeah. Um, so the, and then the design, the 3d printed parts of it too, it's not just for the button. You can also 3d print like different things you want to slot that mouse core into. Um, and you know, Microsoft took, went to great lengths to explain to me how like they designed <laughs> this thing. So like the, the edges of the mouse core itself are like slightly tapered so that if you slide it into the tail and you insert like a USB C to charge it, a USB C cord to charge it, you can still move the mouse along without that USB-C cord just kind of getting in the way and tripping that's your cool. mouse up. That's, uh, th yeah. That sounds like good mouse design, something uh, exactly. a major company should think of when putting yeah. their freaking charging ports on their mice, <laughs> Apple. God. 
Oh uh, my goodness. I love this. Do oh we do we have goodness. any do we have any we don't have battery life or price yet for the Shillin? Yeah, so okay. unfortunately we don't know until the fall uh, or in the coming months when Microsoft uh makes this available for sale what the price will be or what battery life will be. I try to ask. I will say they did show me they walked me through how to like ma map some of these macros and I mm -hmm. mapped like an embargo agreement macro. <laughs> I was like <laughs> That's one good. button That's push good. one push of the button opens to make that a uh, opens key. a reply window exactly yeah. and then another push is i agree to the embargo please send and here's then another push address. sends here's the email. Shipping address. Yeah. yeah here's my shipping address yeah oh my god so Let's many good hurt. ones so um many, so, so many i can't ones. wait i can't this wait to really, really get cool. one it's really cool to see yeah. microsoft like doubling down on this because yeah like yes. the xbox controller they not many companies are thinking about this at this level, you know, like we just wrote up uh, Logitech's new ergonomic yeah. mouse, which is kind of a yeah. cool thing. And the that's vertical one, yeah. The Logitech Lift, which is a cool vertical mouse. I tested uh, the MX vertical a couple of years ago, so it's kind of a smaller version. It is cool. The companies are thinking about this. And I think Microsoft and Logitech are the best productivity mouse making companies out there, like yeah. not for gaming mice, but for office use and stuff. At least they're thinking about it. That's cool. What what else did you see, Sherlyn, over there? I yeah, I think what I was more excited to write about after the tour was after my time with Microsoft was mm -hmm. the our tour of their inclusive tech lab. This is a new dedicated space mm -hmm. for um, basically Microsoft to engage the disability community and other members of the tech community, um, and to be like, what can we do? product wise to make something better for people with different needs. Right. And uh, Microsoft has built this as sort of an embassy of sorts for people mm -hmm. with disabilities. Um, and I will say like, after I asked my cousin, who's a paraplegic to read the article, he was like, Oh, wow. I could see myself coming into this space and like, you know, he, but he says that he does DIY stuff all the time. And you, if you know members of this disability community, you know that DIY is such a part of the life where like you have to make things work for you because they weren't designed to work with you and you always have to like MacGyver it. Um, so anyway, my cousin was like, I do so much DIY stuff. I could see myself like bringing something in here and, you know, he said he would felt so much better about like whatever he was trying to do if he was doing it in a space like this, mm -hmm. because you would just have like more ways of making it work. Um, so anyway, we, we took a tour. You can read the full details on Engadget.com. I don't know if we have the time to go into it here, but this space is very carefully designed to cater to people with different needs. It's like anything from even the surface texture of the floors, the tactile differences between areas to double motorized, um, doors that are ADA compliant. So mm -hmm. very often, um, when you have ADA compliant doors, they only open one door right, right, and right. that is wheelchair width but if you have a wheelchair and you're also like pulling like a bag or like you have a bulky item with you then like good luck getting through like mm -hmm. it's yeah so or if you're in a bigger this, chair yeah yeah exactly so this has like a double motorized door entry which is great and then there's cool. a sensory area that's visually just very stimulating and it's it's um part of an early uh part of microsoft's early efforts to get to know what simulation and neurodiversity have to mm -hmm. do with and for each other. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's that too. I, I could cool. go on, but are I think they, I might Are not. they opening this up to the public? <laughs> are they inviting people? Like how, what do you, how is the lab going to work? Do we know? Yeah. So uh, I believe that like it is two, two things, right? One is we can look back to how Microsoft has engaged people with the Xbox uh, inclusive tech lab, because they did have a space that's about mm -hmm. half the size before when they were designing the adaptive controller. Microsoft told me they had like invited things like pe uh, people like uh, designers of inclusive clothing or uh, members of Congress they've invited in to talk about designing inclusive voting booths. Mm -hmm. So it feels like that's partly outreach. So I think um, Microsoft has a list of people they want to reach out to it, to invite to the space, but also I believe you can submit a request. I don't have the exact email address uh, to submit a request. I think you might be able to find that on the Microsoft website, but mm -hmm. one of the things that the um, the uh, inclusive tech tech lab team member said was, he was like, oh, I think my inbox is just gonna be swamped with requests now. So I think that people do have to submit some sort of request to go in. That's cool. I mean, it would be cool to like, yeah, it was open enough for people to pitch ideas. Like, hey, I wish yes. this thing did this or worked like this. And Microsoft I, could actually bring people in and have them help yeah. out a little. Yeah. That's what I think. It's like you you get the like um 
it's technically open to the public, but mm -hmm. in the sense that you have to maybe make an appointment, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, it's hard yeah. to like go to a corporate and they're like out in the middle of nowhere too. Like they're yeah. not, it's a trip from Seattle to get there. Um, yeah. that's really cool. I'm glad you got to do that trip, Sherlyn. Uh, we did uh, a couple of years ago, it was Dana and me, Dana Woolman, our mm -hmm. editor in chief. We did uh, a visit to the Surface de Design Lab over there. Mm. It's always cool to see like people just dedicated to thinking about this device and like uh, all the pieces that go into it. Yeah. Did they show you the, um, so, so I, I prepared mm -hmm. some, like, I took a lot of videos from uh -huh. my time on the campus. Cause like, we did a whole day thing. Okay. So like, yeah. here's a yeah, bit yeah, of behind yeah. the scenes they, we met them at like 10 AM, 9 30 AM. We arrived. Mm -hmm. And then we took a tour of the whole campus first because they had decided they were only going to show us the actual goods at like mm -hmm. 3 PM or something. Oh. So we toured the campus, a lot of trees, a lot of trails. I was so happy. It's my happy place. Yeah. Tree houses. I'm sure you saw that too. Devendra mm -hmm. um and then they took us to like the places that I think are on their tours right so like like you said yeah. the surface lab the xbox area the yeah. um they took me to this uh quietest room in the world it's yeah, like certified by chamber. chamber yeah yeah exactly so it's like um an echo chamber sit in there? did you sit in there I did I was in yeah. there and they closed the door turned yep. all the lights yep. it's like spring floors it's like this the quietest room in the world. There's no sound. You feel like you're in a vacuum, basically. You can hear. Um, you can hear your heartbeat. You can hear yeah. disturbing. It's disturbing. Like it you is. can hear blood pumping through your. Like yeah. you can feel your pulse because there's no other sound. Uh, yeah. Kind of. And and you they like they had to carve out like a space for it within the building. Like it's separate from other parts of the is walls don't touch things basically yeah, right yeah. and it's, it's like kind of amazing. But, we left our uh one of our former video lead kyle in there mm -hmm. to shoot some video <laughs> and he was in there for a couple of minutes he came out he was like just, <laughs> it was awesome. like uh, went through an out-of-body experience or something yeah, uh, yeah. you have to be mentally prepared great. to enter yeah. the void you know yeah we also saw like on um, their um advanced their prototyping center. So like there was mm -hmm. like a, almost like a factory floor with CNC machines, yeah, laser, like yeah. water jet, that sort of thing. Uh, we saw all sorts of prototyped like keyboards and Xbox controllers, all of that stuff too. Um, it was just fun. And I do think that yeah. Microsoft conducts these tours from time to time for visitors. So it's not just an experience that only I was able to have. So hopefully y'all can actually, uh, yeah, have yeah. I wish they opened it up that out more too. to more people in general. But yeah, this is cool, yeah, Like, tricky. what what else do we have? Do we have to look forward to from the uh, the inclusive tech lab at this point? I I would say like with this dedicated space and Microsoft's like obvious determination to make this work. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Microsoft really just like lead the way in building inclusive products. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if the next Surface event would have something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I also, by the way, want to shout out that the um, one of the inclusive tech lab team members, he like has a like a, a prosthetic hand, mm -hmm. and so he's a like a one-handed use case mm -hmm. and he had like a surface duo as like what his interaction device mostly uh -huh. and uh the way he used it i had never thought of it this way I never thought of the duo two this way which is he flipped it so that two of both of the screens were sort of facing out right yep. and he just yep. like had it had it hanging off of his arm with the with, on one one arm and then with the other hand he was able to control like use it That's you cool. know and so like really you cool. couldn't do that with a smartphone but the dual screen device you could so i thought that was pretty interesting i was also thinking like when we were talking about pixel watch stuff i'm like google let's let's go a little hard here let's push it like mm -hmm. where where's my you know bendable oled screen that could go all the way around <laughs> my wrist or something like that like <laughs> we've seen that but yeah, not not google yeah it's not google and has not worked out so well so far but that's cool glad to hear you had a good trip sherlyn we're going to be hearing yeah. more about this uh inclusive tech lab down the line and hopefully i want to see this mouse like i want them i hope yes, they can like too. release this thing and uh let's get our hands on it i love uh, you know what guys i like microsoft input devices and i'm not afraid to yes. say it and it's because they <laughs> think of things like this so down with that let's move on to some other news uh r.i.p ipod R.I.P. R.I.P. Apple has announced that they're going to discontinue the iPod Touch um, soon. They're pretty much going to be selling it out. Um, you can get one while supplies last, but this is this is it. This is the last iPod. It's been 20 Sad. years of this thing. Nate, you're the like audio nerd and uh, music device nerd. How do you how do you feel about this? I mean, it's it's clearly inevitable, and mm -hmm. we've also had this conversation multiple times. Like first when they discontinued the iPod Classic, which was like kind of the first real sign they're like, oh, we're kind of getting out of this game, 
And then I think it was 2017, they discontinued all the other iPods except for the Touch. Mm -hmm. And they haven't updated the Touch in a few years. It still has like a tiny four-inch screen. Um, so yeah, very inevitable, very logical, but also like one of those things that makes you stop and sort of like assess like an era, right? Like mm -hmm. from- It's been 20 years. Yeah. Longer, yeah, 2001 to now. Um, and I think for a lot of people like my age, probably within, you know, give or take five years, mm -hmm. the iPod is like a huge thing in that A, it was like this transformative music experience, but also um, a gateway drug into a resurgent Apple. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Whereas, and the beginning of the end for the music industry too, in a way too, right? right? Like that, that was the end of albums mm -hmm. or CD sales pretty much. Yeah. Because they yeah. had cracked the code. Sherlyn, like, do you have any, first of all, First of all, I'm not even going to ask <laughs> where you were when the iPod came out. God. Oh, no. Uh, but you have, That's where I was. Yeah. Do you have, yeah, but what grade? What age? <laughs> um, do you have any iPod memories or at yeah. least like the early stuff? Where, like, how did, how did I, you remember the iPod? I had the one, I don't know the model names. I was young enough to not know the model names, I guess. Um, don't tell us. I how young. The, don't tell us. I know. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember either. I, I started with the one where you could engrave the back, but I think they all could, um, mm -hmm. with the tiny, like, I want to say two to three inch screen up top. And then the wheel at the bottom, the big yeah. wheel. Probably. A yeah. Nano, that's if I had to guess. I pro not, not, I, it was, it was the size of an iPhone. I want to say okay. so. So, so maybe classic, iPod, yeah, 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 yeah classic, a full on yeah. iPod, yeah. So a full on iPod classic where like you would like drag your thumb around the wheel to kind of like yeah scroll mm -hmm. through things. Gosh, gosh, I love that thing. Like you loved it? I was going, I loved it. I was going from, um, but no, I love hated it. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear, I loved uh, my MP3 players. I had so many different ones. I had my discman. My discman yeah. was one of the first things I bought myself with my own money, and I like love um from saved up allowance i wasn't working too young to work anyway um, <laughs> after did having this have, man did you ever have an mp3 cd player shalin like an, it's a, a cd player that played the mp3s off the discs because you could put those, those, songs those on were, were the yeah. shit yeah yeah interesting am I, am no i did not breaking your brain right now um, yeah, yeah you are that, that is Whoa. late 90s that was and i remember actually i think the first place oh, i saw 90s. one is i was watching like uh screensavers with leo laporte or whatever show he mm -hmm. was doing at that point and they brought on one of these things was like i don't have a portable cd player and i was in high school at the time but i would love to like throw all my like mp3s and mp2s onto a uh -huh. disc because then you'd have hundreds thousands of songs on like a six how did you store that many because they're just fi you just put the files on there you so put the files like on three megabyte five you burn, megabyte you oh, burn a cd you use the storage for the files instead of like the music format exactly okay, okay. Right. exactly oh uh, that's so so i never we never had that wow but like, you definitely the navigation had that. challenges of trying mm -hmm. to get through like several oh, hundred songs on it was a mess like yeah. if i yeah. wanted a single song it was a disaster Impossible. awful but, Hey, this is so we were coming from there. So, we came from the world of Discman to these weird uh, yeah, MP3 CD yeah, players, exactly. which what was like a stop app. Mini disc was never a big thing in America. Although looking back, I really oh, love the design dope. of those things. They're so wish. cute. Yeah, they're so cute. Yeah. But you had to record in real time, so it's like the, yeah, the usefulness you know. of a digital thing not there. Then the iPod came out, and there were other MP3 players before. Creative had a bunch. Yeah. Rio had some. I had a I had, Creative. Yeah, I had an iRiver, a, yeah. a little iRiver yeah, stick. Yeah, they were a thing. Oh, yeah, while. yeah, I remember that. 128 yeah. megabytes. But the the iPod came out, and it was a big deal. You could store tens of thousands of songs, right? Yeah. Um, very expensive, but also very restrictive, right? You could only buy the songs from the yes. no, no, store. No, 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 yeah. no, That's not true. You could put yeah. any kind of rip. No, that is 100%. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right. There was the iTunes, the iTunes app back then was actually, you could just drag yeah. and drop things well, from no, your no. file. What, what I mean, yeah. what I mean is the iTunes stuff itself was very restrictive. Oh, like it if was you bought all a song from DRM. the store, then yeah. yeah, yeah. It was all lockdowns, all DRM. So yeah, yeah. if you were lucky enough mm -hmm. to have your MP3 library, yeah, you could throw that in there. But yeah. the iPod was the beginning of that, that basically. I and, mm -hmm. hated iTunes so much on the PC. That is it where was... we learned to hate iTunes. Yeah. <sighs> I, so yeah, I still I, hate it. My first iPod I got in 2002, mm -hmm. and yeah. I had a Windows PC at the time, so I had to use some like janky Gasp. Yep. music match software yep. music oh, match. Love um, <laughs> yep. and i still loved it but then i uh i got a mac in 2003 my first laptop was a powerbook g4 and i was like oh my god this is so much better which it was at the time and then that was before itunes got to be this like bloated monster that did too much and uh yep. yeah on windows it was never all that great but like in the 2000s on a mac it was pretty dope mm-hmm 
good for you. I've never had a Mac until I came mm-hmm. to America, and yeah, so that was yeah. way later in my life. But but I remember before that too. While we're being nostalgic for a moment, like I just be- before I got an iPod, I would stock up on blank CDs to burn my music because I had my disc man and. Mm-hmm. Are, like the just the thinking of all that waste like that that material so that has just yeah my mom has been on a bent to like get rid of all my stuff recently <laughs> she's like look at all these cds i'm like mom mom sentimental value sentimental i burned a but, stupid amount of cds me oh, too. so yeah. many and then oh. yeah then we just stopped all of a sudden remember buddy cd 305 burners love, anyway. buddy 305 love in the chat room points out something i recall this is what i was thinking about uh-huh. nate um the ipod <laughs> did not take mp3s you had to transcode them that's you had not to convert true. them that's not true you had to transcode them to I, aac dev 100 percent yeah not true incorrect mm, i I, I, know, like, I, will, which I would bet you want. i would bet 500 dollars that that is not true you <laughs> had to convert it dude no apple itunes was doing conversion for that uh, but i'm literally gonna go find go the spec go sheet go right now, go now. Go now. <laughs> maybe go you're it. talking about different Bro. models yeah maybe, maybe earlier no, this is this is 100 inaccurate it always okay. played straight i actually trust nate on this i trust nate yeah. on this but I remember I there was a lot of transcoding. Like, I remember no, people were importing their no. libraries and had to do stuff. No, but there was anyway, importing, but no transcoding, maybe. I don't know. Let's, it's, uh, it's anything just, else. That is just wrong. <laughs> Look at what Prove the it. iPod did to us. Prove Look at it, what Nate. it did to us. <laughs> Prove it, Nate. That's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Find me, find me the text. Um, but it was, it was hard to use, especially if you had a Windows computer. So I basically never, I never had an iPod. I was trying all these other things because I was more of a Windows mm-hmm. user. And uh, yeah, I didn't have an Apple device until like the iPhone 3GS. That was your first oh, Apple device. That was my first yeah. one. So, hey, we're not going to change the name podcast. We'll always have that. And you know, that's good. <laughs> that's going to be the name for my pod, if anybody remembers. But we have all these youngins coming in who have no sense of history, who don't know. I did not struggle. know that that was what it was based on. The struggle off of, yeah. of digital music. So, you know, RIP iPod. Yep. Enjoy the easiness of uh, <sighs> Spotify now and Apple yeah, Music right. and everything. We miss Nate. You. Yes. Sonos. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. had a bunch of, it. and we're, we're going to be running out of time soon, but Nate, you were, t- you chatted with Sonos. You took a look at some of their new hardware, the Sonos Ray, which we yes. talked about a leak of that. Uh, I think last week, the Sonos Ray is real. It's it is Sonos's real. most affordable soundbar yet. It's $279. Uh, how mm-hmm. do you feel about this? Because you're the resident Sonos fanboy too. Yeah, uh, I am, but I'll be curious to hear what you think too, because mm-hmm. you're more of a home theater guy mm-hmm. than I am. Um, my sense is that, uh, well, in the demos we heard, it sounded great naturally, uh, but I'm not comparing it to anything else at the time, right? So I'm like, okay, it just sounds like a really nice upgrade over like your crappy built in TV speakers. And uh, Sono said that they're sort of targeting at, they said like nine out of 10 people just use the TV speakers, uh, which mm-hmm. is like a yeah. shockingly high number to me. Yeah. And this would be like an immediate huge upgrade in a number of ways specifically they, they they focused on dialogue quality they focused on uh bass response and uh i don't remember the i think the third thing they mentioned a lot was like a wider sound stage than you'll mm-hmm, get from mm-hmm. a tv speaker so uh it's not a lot smaller than the beam which davinja reviewed last year uh but has a much simpler speaker array uh but nonetheless like it sounded really nice and i think the the difference here with what Sonos is doing versus what other companies do is like they don't really play in the budget arena, right? Two hundred seventy nine dollars right, right. is still a, yeah. a fair amount of cash, uh, but it's cheap for them. It is like that's basically Vizio territory, you know, yes. or like right. mid range Vizio territory. Right. Yeah, when, when when all you could buy from them previously was four hundred fifty dollars, this is like a lot mm-hmm. more accessible. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of people who don't you know know or care about Dolby Atmos, for example, don't care about it not having HDMI arc don't care that it doesn't have a microphone uh i could see that being the case for a lot of people who just like want a better experience Mm -hmm. and the good thing about sonos is that if you wanted you could later add a sub to get more bass or you could add rear speakers to do surround so you can like start with a modest you know center speaker here and then build it out a bit to get a more impressive setup did they talk about the vertical orientation for this thing because i remember reading that you could make them rears vertically no uh that was not a thing that came up so that's not is that a that, thing that exists mm-hmm. at all because that was part of the leak i think yeah i think that was part of the leak but i don't believe that it was accurate okay yeah okay uh, they don't, they that would have been far more interesting sonos what are you doing um, oh right like you could stand it vertically yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, no, yeah, yeah. that's not a thing not a thing mm-hmm. no nope. that's a shame um, yeah but it sounds nice. It'll be on sale at the beginning of June. 
Um, I think for a lot of people who like look at the beam and say, man, $450 is like as much as I spent on my TV, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this might make a lot more sense. Sherlyn, I'd say I could see it being good for you. Um, I think so too. It's mm -hmm. a lot like the, the Sonos Roam, the portable speaker they released a year ago in yep. that it's not like the cheapest option you can get, but it's nicer than, you know, you're paying more, but you're getting a lot of nice features, all that mm -hmm. interconnectivity of the Sonos system. They really do a lot of focus on audio quality. So I think it's, you know, it'll certainly sound better than say like the, mm -hmm. the uh, like Roku sound, uh, sound bars that or the, thing. or the Vizios, like the comparable Vizios mm -hmm. too. And you get, you get the usual Sonos stuff too. So you you can build out Sonos ecosystem. You get uh, Spotify connect supports this now yep. it supports airplay. So that's yep. all, that's all super cool. Yeah. Um, I'd recommend this to you, Sherlyn, or anybody looking for yeah. like an easy, easy soundbar to go into. Although a lot of videos are have Spotify now too. So it's like, mm -hmm. you can go cheaper and like, yep. just deal, deal with like a hit in terms of like network compatibility and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Sonos is good though. I love Sonos. I don't I know. know. Put yeah, one, I mean, you put, I know. put the small one in your bathroom or something. You get some shower mm -hmm. tunes. Yep. Love doing love that. Shower tunes. Love shower tunes. Um, rewind. Uh, yeah, yeah, Nate, you're, you're right. You're right about the iPod. <laughs> Dang. There was Thank there was that. something. There was something. They the, the there Apple, was a lot of transcoding. Apple yeah. sold AAC files. Yes, I remember but, Apple selling AAC files. Yeah. But yes. Could you but, rip into MP3 from iTunes? Yes. Okay. Okay. I think yeah. For a while there, iTunes was doing some ripping. I remember that. Well, you it always to. does. I you still always, have a, I still have a yeah. 2009 PowerBook that or a MacBook that still works. Mm -hmm. you can, <laughs> I, I, I'm nice. eventually going to take all my old CDs and rip them and Absolutely. finally get rid of them. I yeah. need to get like an external. I have like a, I still have like a Blu-ray burner. One of those oh things. My gosh. Or, oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I have one of those things around and uh, yeah. I need, I need to rip some Blu-rays guys. Like this reminds <laughs> me of a lot of things. Uh, Sonus is also doing a voice assistant. Yeah. So the deal with what? that is that yeah. it, it's going to work on well the, for starters it's going to work on any speaker they've ever sold that has a microphone they said right. which is nice uh compatibility they're going back to you know products from 2017 so uh good on them for supporting as much of their hardware as they can mm -hmm. uh it's only for controlling music and controlling your sonos system so it's not comparable to alexa or google assistant in that regard but mm -hmm. what I will say is it's super fast, at least from the demos that they showed us. Mm -hmm. Like, it was super responsive. You'd ask it for something, yeah. and it would just immediately start playing. Um, it's doing all the processing on device. So nothing is getting sent to the cloud. Nothing is getting sent to Sonos. So from a pri privacy perspective, that's a win. Um, Can so it play it, from any music service? Or it can play it... from right now. For starters, it works with Apple Music, Amazon Music, Deezer, and Pandora. So Spotify. No Spotify. Yes. Ah, yes. No Spotify, no YouTube Music. But you've got to figure they're going to get it on there eventually yeah. um, as they, they are very platform what, what does this right? thing sound like, by the way? Oh, when it talks back to you, it's the voice mm -hmm. of Giancarlo Esposito. What? Giancarlo Esposito? You Gus guys didn't Spring? read this in my... Gus yes. Spring? No, I, I'm, I'm leading up some tension in this piece for you. Nate, <laughs> I'm trying to build you up. Uh, but uh, Gus Fring himself. Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. Um, in your, in your, he's a good voice. So yeah, he does I, have a good yeah, voice. Sure. Uh, it was interesting. There was definitely questions from people like, why didn't you go with like, how did you choose, a, you know, an yeah. identifiable name like him versus like a generic voice? Um, and they're like, yeah, we tried every, you know, we tried all sorts of different things, but we just wanted something that had like a nice, like warm personality, like a well-known voice that's not like... Uh, you know, not too well known, mm -hmm. I guess is what I would say is like, you know, it's a good you'll, voice. Yeah, yeah, you'll recognize it for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but you want to is, is he doing like DJ voice or is he just doing like it's normal very straight, voice? like normal. Yeah. Mm. Um, but the voice assistant doesn't talk back to you that much, actually, because mm -hmm. usually you're saying like, hey, play this song and it just starts playing. Turn up the volume, turn on the volume, skip, et cetera. There's no need for it to respond. <laughs> so they're not filling space with lots of like unnecessary like confirmation cues, mm -hmm. which is nice. But if you say like, oh, um, you know, what song am I listening to? Then Gus Fring is like, hey, yes, you're listening to the new Carly Rae Jepsen or whatever, <laughs> which is pretty great. You know, uh, you know whose voice okay. I want as a voice assistant? Mm -hmm. Ace John Benjamin. <laughs> I mean, sure, we want his Archer. voice and everything. Yeah, Archer, I just want Archer. Bob's from Bar Bob's, Bob's Burgers. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love. I mean, I love his voice. Yeah, and they yep. said they're going to add more voices as they move into more regions and, mm -hmm. and possibly also for the U.S. Um, no word on if it mm -hmm. will be uh, more <laughs> actors or you know some computer generated voices or whatnot. That's but, cool. Um, more yeah, actors I'd, would be fun. That was always like the the promise with like ways and stuff too. Like uh, right, a whole bunch of actors. 
Yeah. And then they disappear, right? Like you have it for right. a while and then it disappears. I feel like they're somebody needs to like fully digitize an actor's voice, which is possible now. We're kind of getting there and just like mm -hmm. make that mm -hmm. make that a fully computerized thing. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Um Trillin, you could totally get the ray and uh, one of the new roams yeah. in a in a new color. Yeah. You know. And then you can have like synchronized music audio. Yep. across your bathroom and living room. Uh, I, I really like the uh, the Sonos Room, so yeah. I have one of those for the backyard. So like when we're doing barbecues, I can play yeah. music in the house and like bring that outside. Although part of me wants to go full Sonos move, so we that shall thing see. Is the big boy, yeah, it's so big, it's so big, it's, it's so, so beautiful. Uh, thank you for the Sonos update, Nate. Uh, yes. A quick quick run through of a couple other gadgets. Sony announced the Xperia One, the Xperia One Mark IV, Mark IV. Yep. Mark IV. Yep. But yep. I, I hate Sony That's names. That's not confusing at all. I know. Uh, I know. Sony names every every time. Uh, this is a super powered uh, Android phone. Yep. That yep. is all about uh, having a kick ass camera. Basically, mm -hmm. That's what it seems mm -hmm. it can shoot 4K 120 FPS. Um, it has a built in telephoto zoom for 85 mm -hmm. to 125 millimeter equivalent zoom range. That's pretty mm -hmm. wild for mm -hmm. a thing like this. Um, this looks more interesting than any Sony Xperia we've seen in a very long time. Like, do you have thoughts on this, Sherlyn? Well, Sony's been doing this thing mm -hmm. with their Xperia mm -hmm. 1 or Xperia phones for a long time, where it's just going more and more hard into the, like, the vlogging space, right? right so this right. is really like, not only can it shoot... Um, 4k at 120 fps too uh sony's also promising like a really good gaming experience there's a 120 hertz screen here you've got sure. like mm -hmm. um 21 point uh, 21 by 9 oled screen 6.5 inch and then also 240 hertz touch scanning rate so like they're like yeah gaming i'm like cool but cool. as with a lot of these xperia phones sixteen hundred dollars <laughs> what sure <laughs> what what is what does an iphone pro cost you know what does a pro max cost that is that is your, your yeah yeah you're yeah. you're kind of at that level this is like a very yeah. specific enthusiast level thing yeah you can also use it as an external display for some sony cameras like i i okay. have that's i have cool. weird gadget love for sony <laughs> cameras i have uh an a7c next to me which is the the full frame the compact mm -hmm. full frame i love their lenses oh yeah um I think the real question is like, do these lenses, because these are Carl Zeiss lenses on uh, on these, like right on the phone, does mm -hmm. it actually make a difference compared to, to the iPhone or to a typical right. Android phone? You is, know? This, is the sensor size su such that it can recognize the mm -hmm. differences between these lenses? So, I mean, Sony makes the sensors for everybody. So right. I feel yeah. like they should have the, the leg up here, but that historically has not been true, right? Like we, we've never really loved these phones. This one seems interesting they though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Sony has had like a decent photography experience. I haven't reviewed an Xperia phone in a long time, so I couldn't tell you like what the recent uh, camera performance has been like. But I, I, I think they're going hard on this for a reason. I think their video performance is probably one of the better ones out mm -hmm. there. And then I'm not sure if on image because of like other um, companies like Apple and Google doing so much on computational photography that whether like Sony has an advantage there, but all told i think on video side sony will have that advantage and if you're the person the type of person that wants to spend a lot of money on a video um camera or like a very very like powerful at video phone sony is one of the brands out there that people rave about yeah yeah makes sense i mean sony sony's a good brand i have i have a lot of problems with them i wrote a piece about like <laughs> will they ever get back to their like glory days and so corporate was very yeah. pissed off about that so oh, okay when you write something that makes a company call you the next day um You're either, either a right. complete failure or a success i don't know everybody uh but this phone seems cool um buddy 305 love yeah. points out that it has a headphone jack which is it does cool. have a headphone jack oh, i mean so, sony knows what's up Sony will, yes. I feel like they will be the last company still Definitely. building phones with headphone jacks after a certain point. Good. Good on you, Sony. Yep. Um, really want to quickly shout out, uh, Intel announced some new 12th generation HX chips that are going to be coming to laptops. And these are just really interesting because uh, these are the first 16 core uh, laptop mm. CPUs we've ever seen. Wow. Um, these are based on Intel's new hybrid processor too, or hybrid design. So. It has eight performance cores and eight efficient cores. Those yep. efficient cores are about as powerful as like the 10th gen Intel chips uh, to give mm -hmm. you some perspective there. Uh, big boys, these are big boys. Uh, they <laughs> huge run- Huge watt draw, right? Huge watt draw. Uh, base 
watt draw TDP thermal dynamic profile of 55 watts, they can boost all the way up to 157 watts, which is at oh that goodness. point is basically a desktop. So <laughs> we'll get like, like 20 a, minutes of battery life, a small gaming yeah. desktop. So Intel is really aiming for performance here. These things are made for people who do a lot of rendering and judging from the graphs they gave us, like it's like a minuscule amount of a performance lead over the 12900. HK, which is the like uh, the previous mm. chip, I think that was what fourteen cores. Um, you know, slight bumped. I think for some people this is, this will be an advantage. Uh, certainly not the sort of thing where they're going to be talking about battery life because battery life is going to be a disaster. Nothing. So. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there is that. So you know, th those are cool. You, Keep an eye out for those. Get, you think you'll get a laptop to review with one of those at some oh, point? Oh, absolutely. Soon? Yeah, yeah the, those bad boys are coming in soon. So nice. I know Sam Rutherford just reviewed the Razer Blade. Uh, mm -hmm. We will likely have some systems in from uh, Acer soon, and maybe some other companies. Mm -hmm. So. We're going to do what we can. I like to take a look, especially before the, as we get through the summer, because we have to prep the back to school stuff. So it's good to right. be ready for those things. We yeah. shall see folks, but uh, big, big hot processors. I really wonder how uh, hot, literally. hot, just so hot. Uh, I really hot wonder how AMD summer. is going to react, right? Because the Ryzen 6000 line has been super successful, but these new 12th gen chips from Intel were really surprising to us in terms of like how fast they have been in general. So to go even hotter and harder, is pretty wild. Um, yeah, hopefully this works out for Intel. Let's shout out a couple stories from Engadget uh, that are worth reading, folks. Like some big stuff. Uh, James True, editor at large, James True, who is just stalking us in the bushes. <laughs> He's at large. Uh, he wrote a piece about how Gen Z is pushing t NES Tetris to its limits. That's pretty cool. Love this. Love it. Yeah, yeah. it was really cool. I want to talk about Sam's USB C AirPod story. Sam Go actually, ahead. like, was yeah. able wow, to we just really glossed right over that huh yeah oh i'm sorry <laughs> listen Dude, Charlene, i thought you Charlene guys were does done not know what an nes is she doesn't know i don't know what an what nes tetris is, is. Fair enough. Fair enough. i know like, what tetris is what is all this ancient stuff anyway that check out no, that no, piece talk from about james it. check yeah. out that piece from james oh, that's fine that's fine it's good it's some good <laughs> photography and he did a video of it too and yeah no that was a great video too mm -hmm. um my i enjoyed the story i think yeah yeah my tetris memories are more game boy because that's where that game really yes. took off but uh really it's really interesting to see how retro hardware is, is still sticking around and it's cool and more a, more classic crts too right for me it's like the the, the part of um the part of of uh, esports that's interesting to me is like mm -hmm. I know like there's like a lot of like big big esports things, but I like this kind of more obscure, uh, you know, really unusual sort of like old games, old hardware sort of thing. That's yeah. what I it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's let's move on to the other story because yeah, yeah Sam <laughs> Rutherford wrote up uh, a new like hack, a USB C hack from uh, engineer Ken Pilonel. Uh, mm -hmm. He made the first iPhone with the USB C port a while ago, and now he is introduced. An AirPods case with USB-C, which, you know, maybe is a little less exciting to me, but okay. What do you, what do you think? Well, I, I just want to say that the backstory here is interesting yeah, for me because cool. like, it's more like, it's more like Sam has like had developed a relationship with this one source and mm -hmm. was like, um, after the USB-C iPhone, uh, Sam had reached out to confirm some facts and stuff like that. And so like this person then afterwards reached out and was like, Hey, you know, I made a, this, AirPods because he wants to charge all of his devices with USB C, sure. which I can identify. Like I agree. Sure. So anyway, and that's why like he made all of his Apple devices like USB C chargeable, including the AirPods. So anyway, that's a little backstory around this uh, article. Feel obviously go to engadget.com to read it. Very cool. That that is a good story, and I think yeah, we had a good in depth piece on that too. Mm -hmm. So really, really dig that. And uh, what else? What else? Uh, Rune I Dick mean, Legion I think that's. Seven? I don't know. I don't know yeah. what that is. What is Rune Dig Legion? Okay, seven? so so also something else that Sam did was uh, uh, go hands on with Lenovo's new Legion Seven uh, gaming laptops. Ah, ha, ha. Um, he did a hands on an article. I just threw in a comment from our YouTube uh, audience members in there uh, about how they thought oh, it yes. was good. Rune so, yeah. is a listener. Thank you, Rune Dig. Uh, I yeah. just saw text pasted in there. I'm like, what are you doing, Sherlyn? But yeah, the Legion Seven was uh, yes. that was cool. That Intriguing was super, gaming laptop. Super cool. Uh, normally we talk about what we're working on, but I think we're all tired. Trillin, you're going to be off next week. Uh, Nate, anything nice. you want to mention? Anything you're uh, working on? I am pretty much, you know, now that IO and Sonos are done, my plate is fairly clear. So I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, so you can cover me. Catch up on, yeah, catch up on news. <laughs> all of Trillin's news shifts, you know. 
<laughs> I mean, actually, my new I'll, shoes are slow. I'll yeah. say They're that. Um, I mean, probably we will have a review of the Ray soon. Uh, oh, so nice. Keep an eye out for that. Very nice. Very nice. Let's move on to our pop culture picks. And mm -hmm. I want to start with you, Shalyn, because I feel like you always have a secret for us. So what is yeah. what this week? All right. I wanted to write about this one, but we don't write about shows that we watch on our own very much anymore. I didn't have time. Anyway, mm -hmm. I've been watching this new horror TV series called The Terror on Hulu. Dev, have you heard anything about this? Yeah. I've okay, heard a lot you, about The Terror. It's a, it's a show things, I want to watch. I've heard good things, okay. but also from, it is like a slow paced horror show. It's not like, yes, it, it's not I, like a big horror movie. Right? Yeah, I have loved it. So so good. I wasn't expecting to, I, when I watched it, it was like on Hulu, the, se which, the, the show uh, which description. Which are you watching? Because I watched both. Okay. Both the the two and Dev is right to point it out because mm -hmm. both seasons are just different stories, right? Yep. It's almost an anthology, except that mm -hmm. there's only been two stories so far. So I'm like, it's not really. You're not going to call it an anthology. But I was drawn in by the description of the second season, which is about um, some supernatural happenings at a Japanese internment camp during mm -hmm. the Second World War. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I started to watch it, I actually started with the first season because streamers can't get their stuff right, um, and that's actually a story about this lost Arctic expedition on board two ships, the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror. Um, and that was based on a book by Dan Simmons called The Terror, which, you yep. know, named after yep. the boat, named after the bay they were lost in. Um, and it's just oh, it's so atmospheric. <laughs> it's so depressing. In a, we'll in just a, get like uh, sounds from you for horror reviews. Like, ah, yeah, Ooh, it's thanks. so great. It's uh, it's 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 about like it's about like just imagine being stuck in the Arctic and something like some supernatural creature is stalking your crew and then also you're running out of food also everything is poison also like there's inuit people around that some people are racist about too on the mm -hmm. boat so then of course also yeah. people when people run out of food you know what they start doing so <laughs> anyway the if you're not big on graphic scenes i would skip uh -huh. the like last two episodes <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, of the first season. That's entirely why uh, you'd be watching it. You'd have you some seen it, Yellow Jackets yet, Sherlyn? I have not. I feel like um, you'd be really into Yellow Jackets. Yeah, really I, I think I will. I think I will. I should it's start a, that. But it I, is yeah. both a good drama, but also like kind of scary horror and also really gruesome at times, Ooh, like inexplicably. So kind of your, okay. your, your trifecta of fun things. Are you I, into gore, Sherlyn? You yeah. like that stuff? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yes, I have enjoyed the Saw series extremely. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> so there you go. I, I want to close with like a thought on the terror, which is that yes. not only does it do horror well, it does some of this social commentary stuff quite well too, where like the se second season has George Takei in it. Also Naoko Mori, who I love from Torchwood. Oh, also. Yeah. Yeah, she's amazing. Speaking of Torchwood, um, uh, Jared Harris is in the first season, also mm -hmm. from Torchwood. Mm -hmm. Not Torchwood, Fringe. Fringe. He's from Fringe. Um, Fringe. I don't know why I'm hearing noise in I'm the background. I think this is freaky. Our our <laughs> live stream ben is getting a little haunted us. right now. <laughs> the thing about the second season is it's based on like Japanese American stories, stories yes, of Japanese yeah. American people forced into internment camps during the second world war out of pure racism. George Takei himself, his family at did, five, yeah. Yeah. at the age of five years old was taken to one of these camps. And he like lent a lot of input on to how to like portray this in the show. Mm -hmm. And and it's just like, it's so eye opening. And mm -hmm. also a lot of the cast members themselves, I have to shout this out. I read an interview with the showrunner where they said, Alexander was said like, it was harder to make sure everyone was cast ethnically accurately, but they yeah, did it yeah. anyway. Good. And I was so grateful for that. But everyone in there spoke fluent Japanese. Everyone in there was like, you you can't do a story like that and throw in a Korean actor and be like, you're Japanese mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Setting aside Asia's complicated relationship with Jap Japan yes. for a second. <laughs> yes. Okay. I just appreciate that the dedication to like accurately portraying what went Love on it. here. Anyway, that's that's my George, little George trick. Takei did a stage show too about his like experience mm. at the mm. at the internment camps. Uh, so maybe maybe he'll run that again at some point. But it's love so him and yeah. every time I read about like what what this country did to Japanese people, uh, makes my blood boil. It's uh, yeah. not great. But speaking of uh, Asia's uh, you know, difficult relationship with Japan sometimes, mm. uh, I want to ask, Sherlyn, did you see Pachinko yet? Because I talked about Not that Not yet. I saw you time. recommended it last I episode. Was gonna, yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I was going to shout that out, actually, yeah. too. Um, okay. So okay. Have you seen it, Nate? Go ahead. I'm only halfway through. Um, okay. So I should watch it? Okay. 
Yeah. Cool. What do you What do you think, Nate? Because I w- I was going to go to you next for stuff. Okay. Well, that wasn't that wasn't going to be my my mm-hmm. full pick, <laughs> but I will just say that I would echo the recommendation. I'm like halfway through it, and I love it. Uh, it seems okay. extremely well done. I don't know um, how much it compares to the book in terms of getting all that stuff mm-hmm. right, but um, I know there was some concern from some people who really like the book that the I believe yeah. the author is not involved in the show. No, but, she's involved mm-hmm. in the show. Is she? Okay. Yeah. I take it back. Yeah. Um, she, she's her. like directly like helping to put things together too oh, so, great. yeah okay well i guess i read that wrong i don't um, know yeah as, awesome. as far as i know she is but uh, this show is also they just announced a season two so yeah. i finished uh-huh. the season it's incredible it is a really really uh epic look at a single family you know uh starting with a japanese and a japanese occupation of korea to that family. I mean, I know that story very yeah. well, unfortunately, yeah. but yeah. Yep. To that family immigrating to Japan, to the grandson of the original, like, folk featured daughter uh, being in America. So it's like a genre spanning thing. Really, really re- interesting and incredibly well made. Just melodramatic, but also. I think some great, great television. What else did you want to mention, Nate? So this is a super random one. I uh, want to shout out the Lego Back to the Future DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> Which I got That's not really? a pick. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's pop culture. I would say if you've ever liked Back to the Future and want to have a good time, get the Lego DeLorean. It's really, Nate really fun. failed the assignment. He's never coming back on the show. I disagree. I think chat will agree with me, too, that this is a did wonderful you, So pick. did you... How long did it take you to put together? Um... I probably did it in about like four sessions that spanned, mm-hmm. you know, an hour or two each time. That's um, cool. Yeah, it was surprisingly complicated. It's got like a really like cool uh, thing at the bottom where you can like flip the wheels uh-huh. to go from flying mode to non-flying That's cool. mode. That's cool. Like, Love it. Under the hood, there's all this yeah crazy stuff in terms of like how it like comes together. It was, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was very nice kind of chill uh, way to pass some time ben is asking if it has a little flux capacitor piece it does and it lights up there's a ba- there's a battery built into it so Aww. you can light it up uh you can also convert it um to like each of the movies like different iterations so mm-hmm. like on the first one you can get the hook in the back and like the plutonium chamber it's got mr fusion it's got the circuits for the third movie it's really good um yeah Love it does such really good detail <laughs> stuff um i yeah uh, i wish I, I wish i had time to to build those things because right now well, my lego life is whatever my daughter wants to build and i yeah. have to oh i mean she's created fun. a whole town on her nice. place i love that uh, how old is fun. she she's three and a half years old now nice. so yeah big into building and big into the legos i want to quickly shout out uh two movies everything mm-hmm. everywhere all at once which i think is one of the best movies i've ever seen my favorite movie of the year a truly astounding masterpiece from the daniels dan kwan and daniel Scheinert. Um, Sherlin, have you seen this movie yet? Mm-mm, what, what's what, it about? What are you it doing? sounds familiar. What are you? What are you? What, are you, are you working, Vivendris? Some of what? us have worked to do. No, it's been out for several weeks. Michelle Yeoh, the first movie fully starring Michelle Yeoh in like oh, forever. Shit. So yeah, I figured you would have heard about it. Uh, yeah, you, you told me you were a Michelle Yeoh fan. Anyway, it's about I um, am. a Chinese immigrant family. In America, the mother is uh, basically the parents are going through some, a lot of like difficulties, and it's hard to it's hard to describe what this movie is. It, they go on an adventure that kind of uh, spans multiple universes. It gives oh. Michelle Yeoh time to fight, of course, because nice. she is sort of like a she's the owner of a laundromat, but she can tap into her other universe selves and get all those skills. Wow. It is wild. Sensate. It's funny. Um, it's very sensate, actually. Mm. Um, it's really funny, zany. Like you will you will not be able to predict where this movie goes. Excellent. But also one of the most like moving and heartfelt movies I've seen in a long time. Like it has everything. Uh, it really is everything everywhere, everywhere all, all at once. once. Uh, <laughs> I love I like the Daniels a lot. Um, more for like their other work. Uh, ben, our producer, had recently linked uh, the turn up for what video thing, and I forgot I forgot that they did that video. And that the the wildness of that video is essentially in this movie. I did okay. not like their movie, the last one they did, Swiss Army Man, too much. But I thought it was really, really inventive. That was the one with the Daniel Radcliffe corpse. Um, but this movie, <laughs> this movie is perfect. Okay. Love I'm convinced. It. And also uh, co-stars, uh, Ki, Ki Hoi Kwan, who was short round in Indiana Jones. Like, just really, really bringing him back into the world. So, love that. And... Yeah, that, that I do every year for uh, the film cast, my movie podcast. I do a top 10 list of uh, of what I've seen over the year. This will be my number one. 
and I okay. it's gonna take a lot to like really off to like yeah offset that. I All also right. want to shout out Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which I'm sure you're not spoil it for me. In. I spoil all of it. Uh, it involves multiverses, just like everything everywhere. This movie is so much fun. I loved it. I loved it. Great. Go check out my review at the Filmcast. Uh, Sam Raimi is back, baby, uh, in full like action movie, comic movie, like gleeful fun mode. Um, it's also like partially a horror movie at times too. So I yes. think you'll appreciate that, Sherlyn. Uh, yes. It's real good. It's real good because I've become so tired of a lot of the Marvel stuff lately. Um, this feels like okay. a breath of fresh air. Love okay. it. Um, yeah, check out my full review at the Filmcast, folks. I think that's it. You can wrap us, Sherlyn. All right. And that's it for the episode this week, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. This podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Nate online at... At Nate Ingram on Twitter. And you can find Devendra online at... At Devendra on Twitter and at the Filmcast uh, Movie Review Podcast. If you want to send me your requests for the Inclusive Tech Lab, and I'll see if Microsoft will include them, I'm also <laughs> on Twitter. I'm at Sherlyn Lowe. Email us your thoughts at podcast.engadget.com. Leave us a review, please, on iTunes, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Excellent. Mm. What a chunkster of an episode. What a chunkster. Ooh, hell a yeah. Did we, I think we episode. had some, yeah, I, I mean, think we had some music we needed to queue up. Sono Esposito audio. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Julio was talking um, about that. So, are we going to yeah, hear John Carlo's yeah. voice? I don't know. Yeah, what does, yeah, yeah. What does by, John Carlo's voice sound like? Okay, we're going to hey, hear it now. What's playing? This is Superstar by Beach House. <laughs> I never thought I'd heard him. I'd hear him say "beach house" before. <laughs> um, really quick, buddy. Three hundred five love had a funny comment. I wanted to shout out this just in: someone is going to create an iPod NFT to purchase it with Zuckbucks and then use it in Meta. Oh, oh. you just described nope. my Hate worst nightmare. Yep. Thanks a lot. Yep. Uh, heads up, Ben. My audacity, my audacity just blew up. So, oh boy, you're gonna have to use that backup. Sorry, buddy. Oh, like it. Yeah, it just blew up. Like, it it flashed lights at me. It flashed white. It was Mark. like no. It was like kill me now. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so you I don't, don't know have any means. audio at all. I don't have any audio because Oof. of what Audacity just did. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good, good thing. Sorry about that, y'all. I have yep. the Zoom backup. Yep. Zoom backup. <sighs> um. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my of course, uh, like my extra producer pick if i get one is um mm -hmm. that a radio colleague of mine did basically like song exploder but for the turn down for what video mm -hmm. um he does a, a video kind of like music video exploder uh project on vimeo um i put that a link to that in the chat right now that's okay. the, vi the vimeo link and it's just so much fun i haven't um, seen that video in a long time too i forgot there, how, like, how insane it is it, it's it's insane like yeah I think that I would have enjoyed the video on its own, but after hearing them explain the parts that went into the mm -hmm. video um, and like how much love there is between them, like Shiner wanted to cast his other Daniel, his Daniel counter counterpart, Daniel Kwan, mm -hmm. in the video because he just thought that Daniel Kwan's uh, dance moves were so funny to it's him. Pretty, it's pretty good. And it's pretty other, funny. Yeah. Other people needed to like see some of his weird like singular to him <laughs> dance moves have you seen this video sherlyn no uh i, I want to like get through more comments um yeah. also just that's why i'm go a little it, distracted it, like kind of scrolling up um it. there's questions about uh I'm, I'm not sure there's actual quest questions people seem to be just reacting mildly to microsoft's yeah. um Inclusive tech lab, assistive and adaptive tech, and then D-Man78895, one of our regulars, was like, no, it's Apple's turn to get into that and gaming. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, I I know we're running out of time, so I don't want to... Jimmy Jong asked if I saw any Braille tags around the place. Yeah, I saw some. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure if, like, they're, they were all over the place. I do want to, like, be able to talk at length at some point about, like, 
some other things but i think i'll do like an inter a personal we can, thing we can, yeah we'll, we'll we'll do something else uh, or do yeah. your do a twitter space uh yeah to see what else um mark nate, dell welcome back yeah welcome back mark nate dell. i know has to drop soon anything you yeah. want to mention nate before you run no i think i am good uh okay thank okay. you guys thank you chat thank you uh we'll i'll see you next time we do this all right shoot ben your audio please all right yep later y'all i'm gonna have to do two recordings in the future Bye, if nate. i can't trust okay. audacity at this point They'll okay. do Audacity uh, plus another program. Yeah. Mark says there's a segment idea for uh for the podcast, which is that Devendra describes technology before my time, which I think yeah. is yeah. Yeah, smart. Right. Which uh smart. you know that's that's just a good show idea in general. But yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. It is basically a YouTube series, put uh put a Game Boy in front of kids, you know, put old tech in front of kids. Uh and then uh, finally I think it was just like so, there was support for Nate's pick, so that's good too. And I think that was mostly it. Um yeah. <sighs> Okay. All right. right. Thanks, y'all. Let's get out of here. Thank yeah. you, everybody, right. for watching. This stream comes to you via our video team, Julio Barrientos and Luke Brooks. Uh, if you've stuck around this long, you know that we live in a world of algorithms, probably better than the average person. You're a tech fan. Do the tech fan thing and rate us five stars on iTunes. Help us with the algorithm on iTunes and whatever other podcast platform you might be finding us on. And you know, if you've watched this all the way through, just download the episode. Helps us with the numbers there, too. We'll see you next week. Later. Bye, everyone.